Hello everyone, welcome to Trendy Talk. I think I missed you slightly uh, there. No, 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 freebooters. <laughs> what the I've done it again. <laughs> freebooters, we're freebooters. <laughs> oh, we do not put much thought into branding, do we? <laughs> I, um, I genuinely, when, when we were talking earlier, I genuinely forgot what we were called. Yeah. It took me, yeah, it took me I, some moments to get a lot of freebooters, yeah. Yeah, and I, I, the thing is, I kind of like this, right? Because you know how like other podcasts will have merch, they'll have branding <laughs> they'll have all that kind of stuff and i like the fact that we don't have that kind of stuff in fact when i do the thumbnail for this i literally have decided not to use any color schemes anything like that i just get like like three random things that we talk about yeah uh and then just whack them onto a like a thumbnail so it looks you, like you, a thumbnail. i hope you kept because so far you've added them onto the last week's thumbnail right like, yeah. i want you just to carry on doing that forever until it becomes like yeah, this that, amazing color and, yeah that's what, basically that's what I'm going to do right? yeah, like, it's just that. like yeah and it's only, it only takes 5 or 10 minutes to do although last week right so this was a Peertube exclusive for like a whole week last week's episode before on YouTube because on Peertube I am much more relaxed about putting content up there uh, which I really like like I like that sort of freedom and, and like liberation that you've got of like I'll just put something up it's fine like people you know like people are like kind of chill about it people don't you know care that much about it like it's only just you know it's it's just social media mm -hmm. at the end of the day right with youtube i always feel like there's a thing like it's got to be great when it goes out oh, really? Never like, used to be like you have that. a sense of responsibility like, to your audience kind of thing like it's got to be of a kind, kind of quality of. yeah that's interesting well i think i've decided i think like now i put these up on my channel on youtube i think <laughs> I, I think you know like it's part of the the therapy process of yeah. actually getting over that yeah yeah, yeah because yeah. You know, it used to be the case. I put out like th three videos in a year or something like that, and it's like mm, yeah, that's yeah. that's not doing anyone no good, right? Like no one care. You know, like they're not good yeah. enough that they're an event. So I'm, you know, yeah. it's, I mean, so I, I, I for a channel that's got like a very strong like a cha a channel that's like quite professional that has a brand and they do a particular kind of like video, like they need to mm. think about that stuff. But I think for us, like being a bit less precious about it can be good because that's like so we've talked about this before. Mm. It's kind of videos I like. I like the mm. yeah the authenticity. Yeah, for sure. Well, my my favorite channels don't take branding seriously. I think I think it's a you know one of those sort of like uh, capitalist maxims, really, isn't it? Where it's just like you know, and 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 maybe you know, there's some value in it, but like not what we're doing. We're just having a chat, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I don't like we we don't really have a parasocial relationship with with no. the people that watch or listen to this channel, no. right? If they'll you know chime in on usually now it's it's the Fediverse, Mastodon, Plerum, or youtube itself and it'll be like a just like a bit of a casual chat really yeah, and I, you know yeah. again i kind of like that a lot of uh podcasters will try and pretend they've got that or they'll try and have that as well as a large audience i don't know which is all, which is always a little bit i i think to be fair to them i think some i think some people who engage in that they don't get that it's parasocial like they in their heads like they think they're having like they've got fr they th they think of the audience as friends like some of them quite genuinely i think mm. in fact this is a thing i mean i do when i'm on twitch you know but obviously it's a smaller you know disparity like i think there's a there's a th like i so i i follow people who used to do uh youtube many like 10 years ago and over the time have graduated towards twitch because it fosters that back and forth between mm. the people that you watch and the people that don't. I'm not the biggest Twitch, but there'll be a few people I, I the thing watch is, on even Twitch. Even on Twitch, but... like, once you get over a certain audience size, it is just mm. the messages are coming in way too fast. Like, you can't... Even if you, mm. you know, you can spot an odd message and reply to it, but you're not going to remember who that person was out of this sea of, you know, thousands of messages. Well, that's it. And my favourite Twitch channels... The, to be honest, the only Twitch channels worth watching are the ones where... I think it's about 80, I reckon. About 80 people, there's enough comments that, that you've got a bit of a back and forth. I think when you go beyond that, I think it starts to become parasocial at that point. Mm. Could be wrong, could be different for different people. Uh, it could be what, what like the streamer or content creator wants to foster as well, right? Like Sometimes a, a lot of the smaller content creators, they have stars in their eyes, they have dreams of, of being the next PewDiePie or... Um, other ninja he's a f one that they know yeah. right we've heard yeah. a ninja um phase and then like there's a fa phase clan <laughs> see i'm down with the kids phase clan they have people i think who have like names after like so you got phase banks phase fez <laughs> phase gary <laughs> hmm. 
Dave Phase Kevin. Yeah, Keith. I've been. Um, the, uh, the, the, apparently, there's a, there's a long running podcast called My Brother, My Brother and Me. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's the McKell religious family, family, and they are. Mm-hmm. It's three brothers, and they they've been making a podcast for a very long time. Um, and the, the only reason I know of them is they did a D and D podcast, a separate mm-hmm. thing. And I like I like in the background sometimes just listening to people playing D and D, especially if they've got a sense of humor about it. And that yeah, they got a, mm-hmm. called the Adventure Zone or something. Um, but yeah, I was I was reading about. Um, I just stumbled upon the the D and D thing. I've been listening to that on YouTube, uh, and then I googled them, and like the, there was some controversy a while back with them, and I didn't really get to the mm-hmm. bottom of that. But apparently. Like essentially, it was three brothers making a podcast, and they got insanely popular, um, mm-hmm. like you know, ridiculously popular, um, and 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 turning what they did into a business, especially with like family men, they they brought their dad into it. Um, mm. They kind of said like it ruined their family relationship, like this this need to you know several times a week perform this this familial you know close relationship just like destroyed their actual close relationship kind of mm, thing which is yeah. really fucking tragic mm, yeah that i mean that is yeah and, and you see it with family vloggers all the time mm. um you know i mean rest assured if we me and you have a fallen out we'll just stop doing the podcast you know <laughs> yeah. Like that's, yeah yeah <laughs> or, or just literally just fight on the podcast that would know, be more fun <laughs> yeah just really really bitchy with each other on the podcast <laughs> yeah like passive aggressive or something but <laughs> or like de- deliberately like phase lower the volume on the microphone over time or something speaking speaking of volume i think i think i was you were feeding back on my microphone for the beginning of this um i've corrected it now uh-huh. it was wasn't picky it was i wasn't using the echo cancel microphone but so the first few minutes might be awful but it should be okay now Okay. Not that, that, see, that's probably the best bit and the bit that most people listen to. So no, now, I mean, <laughs> everyone's just going to think we're just like awful, you know, awful. Speaking of merch, though, yeah, no, I find, I, if, I, if I'm listening to, you're watching a, a podcast on YouTube, which I do a lot on YouTube, podcasty type things and mm. Let's Plays and stuff like that. And then they're oh, like, go, go to our merch store and buy our merch. And it's like, why? And it's often just like sort of like catchphrasey things that they say in their videos mm. on a t shirt. It's like, why? Why would I? possibly i mean to support the person fair enough but just have a patch on us this desire to sort of wear yeah. things advertise on your chest what you're into i've never really got honestly maybe when i was a never teenager, got that at all not even from like the youngest possible age i think like, as, a, you know, as I, a teenager I, maybe i remember I, like in the 90s i did wear some nwa t-shirts and some malcolm x t-shirts <laughs> um uh, maybe i I can sort of get beyond a political persuasion, maybe. Yeah. I think I think I think I wouldn't like to because I think it kind of uh, opens up this door for a debate and like you know or... <laughs> that you don't necessarily want to have. Yeah. Exactly. No, I mean, one, I know you're always up for scrap, but we've mes- we've mentioned her before. But uh, you know, Veronica explains a YouTuber. There's uh-huh. there's one there's one T-shirt or hoodie or something that she has that says like I'm a trackball person with just like a red ball bouncing and I'm like that's actually quite cool. Uh, that's all right. Actually, <laughs> I got I got um my brother uh, one of those T-shirts that had a square in it and it said CSS is awesome and that but the awesome goes over the outside of the box <laughs> like if you set the box to the absolute limit and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, but that's a joke, really, isn't it? It's a bit of a techie joke that tells you know. I, I like the um the one I think I've seen it on a on a mug. It's like I heart Unicode, but the heart is just like a, a box. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think there's a, there's a few of those as well. Yeah. <laughs> but, what, what? but the thing the thing about having funny things on your t-shirt is it's, it's, I mean essentially, essentially it's having a joke on your t-shirt, but jokes obviously don't bear repetition, right? Mm. So when you've seen it once, it's like and you know on your yeah. own. T- it's, it's an odd it's an odd thing to do. It's an odd impulse. Yeah, like the thing is. Um, yeah, like it's one of those things where like a photograph or a screenshot kind of gets the point across. The, <laughs> yeah, the store yeah. page does the job, right? What's, what, why is there a surge to wear it? I think, I mean, what it yeah. is, I think, I mean, they're, they're called nerd print. And I think the origin, this is going to sound awful, but I think the origin is like socially awkward, socially a bit in, incompetent nerds wanting to like show that they're friendly, like make people laugh as like a, 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 a kind of mistaken belief that that will lead to social interactions i'm saying you know it's simple it's a nonsense way to state it but you know what i mean like in lieu yeah, of having but, social skills i'll wear a joke on my chest yeah i, I suppose so yeah i did i did i mean is it even thought that far ahead or is it actually i think this is more likely it was just given as a christmas present 
I don't know. I, I think, all, I think no, because those those no print t shirt places they got they got huge. Like people will buy those t shirts mm. for themselves and rotate them and. Hmm. But I, yeah, maybe I don't know. I but then again, have I? I what about <laughs> this, this? This is more my my sort of speed. Wearing a t shirt that has your Linux distribution on it. <laughs> see, no. They don't do. Do they do Debian t shirts? Yeah. No. See, I I would be. Uh, if I was painting the house or something and I had to put a t-shirt on, I'd be I'd be quite happy to wear a Debian t-shirt. But I wouldn't wear, yeah. even in that situation, I wouldn't wear a Red Hat t-shirt because that's a company. I'm not. I'm not. Wearing yeah, you don't advertise for free. I mean, my shoes have the logo of the company that made the shoes on them, right? Can't mm, avoid. I don't even like that. I, I don't like it, but like you, you know, mm. it's, actually, I'm not even sure the suit has faded off. Actually, um, mm. but, <laughs> but like just voluntarily wearing the logo, being a—I mean, I, this is almost like trite. Well, it is trite to say it, mm. but you know, being a—you know—the sandwich board people. Mm. Yeah, be, well, yeah, you know, exactly, being one of yeah. those for free. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's that's how I've that. literally always thought about it. It's it's. It just, reminds me. Underselling yourself. I reported an ad on YouTube. I, I often report, if I, on YouTube, if it's often if I see an ad, I'll report it just because mm. it's an ad. Right? I but, often do that on Facebook at work. I only use Facebook at I, work. So regardless of what it is, I, I report it and say mm. it's offensive content because it is, it's yeah. an ad. Um, and then there's a little box saying, uh, is there anything you think we could do to improve our, you know, our, not service, but, you know, words along those lines. And I just, I was, mm. just, I was in a pissed off mood. I just put, uh, I will answer this for, at my usual consulting rate. It's like, what, why, would I, <laughs> why would I do QA for you for free, you know? Exactly, exactly. Uh, I mean, interestingly enough, social media across the board is going sort of down, down the pan. Uh, Twitch recently have reported a substantial decline in the number of, of viewers. Well, did you see um, there was a tweet a while back? Um, Musk, a Musk tweet saying we've hit record mm-hmm. engagement for the World Cup, something, and then somebody posted in a reply there was more engagement in 2017 over the release of some anime or something. So he's just he's making lots of posts claiming that it's going great, it's better than ever. There's more engagement than ever. There's more posts than ever, which mm-hmm. seem to be just outright lies, as far as I can tell. I've also noticed more spam on, on Twitter itself. On Twitter itself, yeah. I, I don't know if that's just a. I, I to be honest, I doubt there's a link. Maybe there's a link. I don't know, but it just feels like well, advertisers were Twitter. pulling out, weren't they? Um, so if I mean, mm-hmm. what, I, and what happens? I think when advertisers pull out, is the prestige brands pull out. So then you get the spammy bottom of the barrel kind of advertising. So you're probably going to notice mm-hmm. it more. And well, it's not even just advertising. It's like I'll, I'll open up Twitter and I'll be like added to a whole bunch of group DMs. <laughs> And these DMs will be like crypto, um, oh. you know, buy, buy this cryptocurrency. Oh, or that like kind that. of, right, okay. That kind of spam. So not even just standard advertising, like literally just stuff that, like, I don't even know how it works. I've been added to a group chat with a hundred and something other people or uh, that I've never met before in my life. It's going to be called something like uh, Ethereum's going to go through the roof or something <laughs> like that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like cri- crypto investors... Uh, high profile portfolio nonsense or shit like that i so i don't even i'm just like report out yeah you know yeah, I mean? like yeah, yeah. Like, but i do it does feel like that there is more of that than than there was maybe a year ago but um I, what, musk or not but they're laying off a load of people of course at meta um oh well, and, I yeah yeah uh 10,000 people or something like that I don't know, but I don't suspect they're just doing as well as they thought they would. Or that oh, um, it might be because like um, Mark Zuckerberg's just spent a ton of money on um, the the VR metaverse shit. <laughs> I, I like I love that. Like he is like you know like this this guy who to be fair built up Facebook as a company from from a small project. Yeah, like, I mean, like on, on, unlike Musk, he did actually make Facebook, and Facebook at the time was you know mm. an interesting, uh, innovative idea. You know, I guess. Mm, I hate Facebook, but like you know, you got you got to give credit where credit's due. I mean, the the other side of that coin was it started out as a way of socially awkward nerds harassing women or something like that, wasn't it? Uh, very, but basically, yeah, getting phone yeah. numbers and shit like yeah. that, right? So. Bill Gates has also got similar stuff in his past as well, where it's like, you know, uh, sort of unhealthy. I think the, the, I remember hearing this, uh, and this shows a little bit of how sort of, how, how we, I think, have progressed a little bit as a society, I hope. That's but it was, it, was, it was a few years ago when I heard this cutesy story about how Bill Gates, when he was at school, hacked into the computers and put himself in all the classes with the 
most number of girls. <laughs> you think you do that nowadays? You think um, you get you get like school shooter vibes, right? You get yeah, like no, for this sure, is not yeah. a person, you yeah. know. But like, I think back then they thought, oh, isn't he charming? You know, I've heard bits um, and bobs about yeah. just looking into computer history stuff. You hear some like Bill Gates stories and Microsoft stories and that. And apparently, his, his home life was it like incredibly competitive, like hot housing, like weird competitive and weird competitive. Like just, just oh. like when, when when friends went round, it was just like, well, we you know we're doing this, we're playing this board game, but it's like you know, I can't, I can't even, I can't even get it across. Mm. But like, you know, just hyper, hyper competitive family and very, you know, pushed to succeed. Mm. That actually kind of reminds me of. Do you know Jake Paul and Logan Paul, the yeah. YouTubers, started out on Vine, I think actually. Their dad is like a former Marine turned. Um, estate agent or something like that right. and he like from from the day they were born he was like pushing them to to be like these uber macho competitive um well to be basically the people that they are today um pretty much so i don't know is that the recipe for success incredibly overbearing parents yeah no i i think so there's mm. um yeah i mean it does tend to when you when you mm, Especially in sports, right? Whenever you see somebody mm. successful, or there, there does seem to be this that came from this environment of very pressured, you must succeed kind of stuff. Have you seen the film? Mm. Um, oh, I'm going to struggle to think of the name of the film now. Uh, it's a, mo- a movie about a, a, a drummer who goes to drumming university and learns jazz drumming under very. It's got Portal Man in it. I'm so bad with names. Give me a sec. I, I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't seen this one. Google, Google, no, Google, no. Whiplash, right? Yeah. Okay, Whiplash. So it's this kid who who loves drumming, and he goes to this very prestigious um, sort of drumming un- drumming thing at a university, and he's his, his teacher is high pressure to the to the point of like abuse. He's actually abusive, and the like. The question of the film is is clearly asking is like, well, what the what the film the thesis of the film is. This is necessary for greatness. You don't get genius without this. And then it's mm-hmm. asking, is it worth it? Mm. And it's a difficult question to answer. Like if you want, if you want, you know, musical artistic geniuses, this is how they come about, like through intense. Well, see, this is this is what, like, I know this is. I'm going to say the trite thing. I think we've ever and ever will say on this podcast. <laughs> but this is kind of why I think, like a, a like a like having a conversation with Einstein would be like literally, I, I think eye opening, right? Mm. Cause this is a guy like he was like way ahead of his time, even like, you know, like he taught at like black universities and all that kind of stuff. Like before it was even considered and you know, something that you could re- really do. And like, and, and, and the guy would seem kind of chill. Like, yeah. Like there was, there was, there's a photo I saw on, um, there's a, there is actually a great Twitter channel called a uh, Twitter thing accounts whatever called history and memes and it's got like old photographs like old clips of muhammad ali all that kind of stuff and one of them was um it was titled something like four physicists walking having a walk in the woods <laughs> and it was like there these three very professor looking fellas suit tie smart haircut all the rest and then einstein in scruffy hair jumper <laughs> yeah and it's like you know, like one of those people looks much more interesting than the other. <laughs> it's like one of those people looks like they're there because they want to be there. It, do you know what I mean? Like yeah, it seems like, yeah. yeah. And it's like, yeah, I kind of, I don't know. Like there's something about particularly the way his mind works that I think, I think we as a people can learn about because I think could be how much, wrong. how I'm much not, of that? Cause I, you, I, I, my education was art, right. And I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm aware of how mythologized, artists lives are uh mm. especially when you go way back to um uh oh god why am i so bad with names the first kind of the, the first renaissance painter i don't know the order of you're the art dude i know um, i know is it one of the turtles <laughs> i don't think i want to say gotchi it's something that mm-hmm. sounds like that what's oh, i swear i'm getting alzheimer's Giotto, right? Mm-hmm. That's not the right answer. Uh, I'll, bring, I'll bring up some Giotto. Giotto. So these are Giotto paintings. And actually, because in, in some cases, like comically bad. Uh, oh. <laughs> but he's like, he, I, I get, I get that Spanish Jesus vibes. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, the, Look at Jesus's forehead. 
Um, <laughs> and big forehead, big no forehead. He's, he's got... Anyway, I guess yeah, that's where you keep the god. Um, but I suppose, yeah, so Giotto is 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 the the father of the Renaissance, the first kind of Renaissance painter. Uh, seen as an absolute genius, and these stories about how he was a shepherd boy in rural Italy somewhere in the hills, and he would just be drawing on a rock with another bit of rock or a bit of stick or a bit of charcoal or something. And like people would see these drawings and like fall down weeping at their beauty and stuff. And it's so, I mean, the, in, in the art world and you know, the art, the arts broadly, you know, writers, musicians, like the, the lives of the ones we love are just hyper mythologized. And I wonder, oh, sure. I wonder how much of our, cause I, as a late, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not educated in science, you know, beyond high school. Um, so I don't know. And I know that obviously Einstein's ideas, you know, general relativity was a mind fuck, like absolutely groundbreaking. But there were other around about the same time and coming off his work, there were other also significant like leaps in thought, right? Yeah. How, was he truly outstanding or was he just, I mean, top of his field, of course, yeah. but was he, do you, know what I'm, do you know what I'm kind of like? Well, this is, this is, I think this at? is why, I think this is why Einstein is Einstein, right? Because mm. he famously had the, the, quote and um philosophy if you can't explain something in simple terms <laughs> yeah. you yourself don't understand it yeah and it's like the e equals mc squared everyone knows e equals mc squared and a lot of people know what e equals mc squared it's uh is it energy equals um mass times the speed of light squared right yeah is that but you know what yeah, that means it. in practice uh not really. Not 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 confidently enough that I'm willing to go on the, <laughs> well, no, yeah, the recording yeah, yeah, and say yeah, it. Right? I do, I do watch videos about that stuff. But like that much mass is equivalent to that much energy. Yeah, are, that's, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and that is, but that's like a, like you can understand that at a like a what GCSE level of science, if that, right? Yeah, but can you? But that, in a way, that's not the important bit. Like the why is kind of the the genius is in the why right like i can come up with i see the genius is in the sort of the reduction of it the the fact that he managed to take something fundamentally quite complicated and then distill it into something that could be simple i don't think there exists an idea that can't be expressed simply Mm. but that's the thing that's that's his philosophy that i think is kind of why he is so prolific as a genius. There are other geniuses that have probably done very, very technical and s- amazing things as well, but we'll never understand them because they're too high level. Whereas as Einstein, like he was a very accessible, smart dude, basically. Mm. Uh, and he, he, he believed that was in some level important because like knowledge is really only useful if you can tran- if you can transfer it from person to person to person right mm. so if you know if you've got like one person who's like a super genius who can w- do stuff that and work out stuff that no one else can the day he dies you're fucked right but like if you've got a good system of knowledge that you can then pass on to future See, generations you're getting at, and I, I do i do kind of you know I, I enjoy i enjoy the sentiment you know if you can't express an idea yeah. simply you haven't had a good idea or whatever like i enjoy that but like just just knowing e equals mc squared isn't what's useful. Mm. Like it, what's useful is scientists knowing the why, and they will from Einstein's mm. work, right? They'll they'll read his maths and understand the maths and mm. be able to apply it to situations, um, mm. which we don't. Knowing, I'm not sure how useful it is that you and I know that energy and mass are equivalent. No, but. The fact that we know that, I think it, there is value in that if, in and of itself, sure. if you know yeah, what I mean. That's fair, yeah. Even yeah. though there's no utility in it, I guess, right? Mm. Like, I like the idea of, like, going to university or going to other educational institutions and learning for the sake of bettering yourself mm. for the sake of that, not not under, like, the capitalist lens of it where you're going to university to learn how to be a better worker. Yeah. yeah. Right? Whereas I believe there's value in that, right? I believe, like, you know, the world needs plumbers and electricians and all that kind of stuff. But then, like... Um, actually, there was a great post on 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 Mastodon Fediverse the other day that I think I, it hit a chord with me, and I'm going to try and find it because I think it's quite near the top of my. It was quite near the top of my feed. I've got a special list on Mastodon <laughs> that. So I, I like I follow a lot of people if you and um, and come on, come on, come, yes, 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 it is. So it's by Jason Lefkowitz. 
And they say, it's good that our finest minds have been focused on automating writing and making art. Two things human beings simply do because it brings them joy. <laughs> it's like, and then the next tweet that follows, follows on. Meanwhile, tens of thousands of people risk their lives every day breaking down ship, uh, ships, a task that nobody is in a particular hurry to automate because their lives are considered cheap. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's, I, that, that one, I don't know, that one cut deep, that one did. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's like... What happened? Like, are we going to die as a, I don't know, like a sentient species if we automate art? What was the first part? What was the first part again? It's good that our finest minds have focused oh, yeah, no, on automating and write, of, uh, automating writing and making art. So I heard this is this is a bit anecdotal. I can't remember where I heard this, but I heard that like, oh no, I do remember actually. I think there's there's a documentary on YouTube about that AI that that played Go and and actually beat a whatever level mm -hmm. player of go anyway i think it was mentioned in that but um like the top the top maths graduates like the best mm -hmm. people in mathematics now rather than going into um you know particle physics or, or or astrophysics or anything like that they they get jobs um with uh, hedge funds mm. making ais that can make sort of fractional trades like just a tiny fraction quicker like it's just a bot race mm. essentially like who can make these um arbitrage mm. trades like the, the fastest so with the best yeah. math mathematicians in the world are spending mm. their effort on that yeah in the exchanges they have there's this great they they regulate the length of cable they use so <laughs> for, for like latency and stuff like that so that you've got spools of uh like ethernet i think it's either ethernet cable or, mm -hmm. or some such cable that they use probably do, you know within their own set of regulations and they wind it they have to have certain lengths of it to artificially l level the playing field with, with latency and it's like that's that's kind of um but yeah uh, like it's um but yeah like like it it it, did, it reminds me a little bit of the there's this like earlier on in the whole like techno wizardry kind of thing in that in, you know when, when it comes to um uh a, a you know like not like ais and computer programs that can that can measure for bit blips in the market and then mm -hmm. you know buy and sell invest as according there was a guy who literally a literal billionaire who literally made all of his money because he just made a program that that basically did that it, yeah. it abided by a set of stock market rules mm -hmm. and it acted based on these rules and well that's the thing uh, that's the it, thing that's i think that's the reason so much because with arbitrage mm. arbitrage is just for anybody who doesn't know arbitrage is just finding discrepancies mm. between markets basically like if dollars mm. are slightly cheaper on this currency market than this currency market then you buy them on this one and sell them on this one very quickly mm. and before you know it, it, can, it can be a matter of seconds before the prices equalize you know they can just be out of whack mm. for like even half a second you just make as many trades as possible as quickly as possible before before they even out so it's 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 a risk free yeah. way of making money basically but it's also basically yeah of absolutely no worth whatsoever to society no it's skimming off the t it's finding a very clever way of skimming off the top yeah i mean you can make the argument that like it's it's the mechanism that does balance these markets and yeah okay there's some truth in that but like but you are this is fulfilling really no and the greatest the greatest math mathematical minds in in you know in our world well, in, in the world of our generation working on that that's terrifying to me mm. that we've that we're endorsing a system that that uses uses people's abilities so fucking poorly mm. i mean that's really yeah. that's not just that's not just disgusting it's like terrifying <laughs> yeah it's i mean it's harmful to society a lot well or or it, it's it's like you know, it's going to have an impact on us as a species. You know, as mm. a species for 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 the for the whole of the mm. future, right? It's like um, as well as that, like some of our greatest minds are being used to convince you to click on adverts. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like what, yeah, yeah. What 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 an absolute waste of yeah. like psychological innovation when you we could be looking at how to defeat things like depression, like what you know, or yeah. shit like that. You know, yeah. like if if we're we're using our knowledge of how the mind works to basically eke money out of people. In a, especially in a situation where you know ca capitalism and, and our way of life is uh, climate change is what I'm trying to shoehorn in there. Like I, you, I, I wouldn't mind so much if if the greatest minds in the world were all you know working in like abstract things, you know things of no immediate 
benefit like astrophysics or particle physics mm-hmm. right if the great if, if mm-hmm. all of our greatest minds were working on that and that was destroying the planet like at least but at least you're doing something kind of noble <laughs> you know it's, it's still not good <laughs> but at least you know there was some nobility there as opposed to yeah just like yeah then, then you mean like, like 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 the innovation in air travel for example how do you mean sorry like innovations in air travel what a, like yes, air travel harmful to the climate, but at the same time, there no, I'm is, just thinking more about that abstract like, knowledge. If we were so bound up mm-hmm. in searching for abstract abstract knowledge and working out how things work, and like if, you I know, see what you mean, yeah. If, if it was if it was we were doing too much philosophy, and that's what's destroying the planet, I'd be like, well, you know, at least <laughs> we were that. At least we're doing philosophy. You know, we, yeah. it was it, it was it was quixotic, but we burnt out like trying to find answers to the great questions. Like that's that's kind of cool, but. Destroying well, yeah. destroying our ability to live on the planet to maximize shareholder value is just so so depressing. It kind of is, isn't it? Yeah. Um. Yeah. Well, we're talking about tech missteps. Should we talk about the Raspberry Pi thing? Go on then. Now I'm not clued up on the Raspberry Pi thing. So, is it to do with the Fediverse? Yeah. Yeah. Well. It, mm-hmm. Okay. So. Uh, I'm sure you caught this a, a week or two ago. Raspberry Pi, yeah, no, because you told me this. Um, they set up their own Mastodon mm-hmm. server, I think, on Raspberry Pis. So they have mm-hmm. their own Mastodon instance running on Raspberry Pis, and that's Federate. And so that got, sounds clever, right? They like, got they got a ton of goodwill yeah. for that from that. <laughs> and then mm-hmm. um, when was it? Don't see a date on there, but uh, December the eighth. So a few a few days ago, a couple of days ago, they announced that they've hired uh, this ex cop. Um, to work on, uh, I forget what, to work at Raspberry Pi at the foundation, basically. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and this ex-cop turns out to be, uh, do you remember a fuss a while back? It's kind of still ongoing about the spy cops. I don't remember. It was just, I mean, it. It's just, the spy cops is just a term they were using to encompass this, uh, these activities. So the, the, there's, mm-hmm. there's uh, groups within the police who are tasked with surveilling you know, dangerous organizations, uh, which mm-hmm. are fine. Um, not going to get into, you know, the, the morality of the police overall, but the, so, but what these, what these groups inevitably end up doing is infiltrating like, um, climate change, peaceful climate change. No, I know this. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and there was, uh, one, one woman who got pre- made, pre- made pregnant. Several, by one of these yeah. Undercover yeah. Parties. So these, these undercover, okay. undercover police will go into, uh, will, will, um, infiltrate groups that, Including, I mean, I'm sure they're infiltrating, you know, actual dodgy stuff as well. But they're infiltrating, you know, just vaguely leftly, left-leaning political groups, climate mm. protest groups. Uh, they're having relationships, you know, romantic sexual relationships with members of those groups, mm. getting married in some cases, having children, mm-hmm. uh, and then when they when they leave that position, they just abandoning these children. Like, mm. and, then, and, and you know, that's all awful. But also, you know, surveilling people without without their um, without their knowledge, for doing absolutely nothing wrong. You know, belonging to a climate action group uh, uh, who protest peacefully should not should not put you on the government's radar for surveillance, right? Even regardless yeah. of whether you think the police should exist and what, who they, whether yeah. they, you know, whether surveillance in and of itself is a, is a useful thing for us yeah. to be doing, pretty much everybody would agree, would agree that groups like that should not be surveilled in that way, no. right? Anyway, so yeah, he was, he was, in, he was involved in those groups and he designed the equipment that they used to surveil and so fediverse reacted you know exactly as you'd predict um which which is all up to that point fair enough like you know i I understand Mm. the connection between raspberry pi and organizations like that i don't like it but you know it's Mm. there um but then the the kind of worst part of it was how flippantly the raspberry pi account responded to people's concerns Okay, so I don't. Yeah, no, I'm not. It was just I don't know if I can find any examples. Of that. I think a lot of it has been deleted, but um, uh, I, sh- I should have got some screenshots. The people were posting screenshots, mm. uh, but yeah, th- th- so people were just raising, you know, legitimate concerns about like, you know, is it is it really a good idea to have an ex surveillance cop, you know, representing this kind of project that's about, you know, people just hacking around? Oh, it's bad. And- I mean. I- uh, the best interpretation, and this is a very n- n- pl- nice interpretation I'm giving here. It's a it's a bad look. It's a bad look, right? Yeah. So people it's were basically a, it, it shows, saying that. And, you know, some people yeah. were, you know, very you know strongly abolitionist, like you shouldn't be hiring a cop. This is like, what do you think? But some some were putting you know reasoned 
looking at it from Raspberry Pi's perspective and putting reasoned, you know, concerns across. And the Raspberry mm. Pi account was just reacting in a very musky kind of, oh, just get over it, chill out. It's not a big deal, kind of, you know. It's very odd. It's, yeah, it shows that they failed to understand the community that they're in, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know it's, how represented it. I mean, I'm sure, I said this in a comment somewhere, I'm sure there's a, a section of the Raspberry Pi audience, community, whatever, who, who, you know, who think that's cool, like surveillance cop, that's cool, that's cool, you know. Not everybody's... Pi, you know, yeah, James Bond, cool, he's, you know. Um, but... No, it's. Uh, but it'd be, yeah. I mean, because like with with like because like Raspberry Pi, they're not a small organization, right? Nah. They they they're going to have how many staff working for them as an organization? Thousands upon thousands, tens of thousands, maybe more. What do you? So they yeah. get, and yeah, they're kind of like even though they they have like then then they're, they're not corporate in some like they are a corporation and they they are corporate. Well, they're charity, know, aren't so... they? They do. They are run as charity. To be fair. Oh, they're a cha- okay. Yeah, they're a charity. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. Okay. But you see them in like schools and all kinds of stuff, don't you? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I, they've got so, you know up to this point they've got nothing but goodwill. You know, they they run. I mean, the reason I always went with Raspberry Pi over because at various times they've generally been slightly better boards than the Raspberry Pi to actually buy better value for money. Mm-hmm. You know, a bit faster than that. But it was the fact that Raspberry Pi was a charity. I like I liked that, so I always went with mm-hmm. Raspberry Pi. Uh, but yeah, okay. I mean, I, I, I thought they were just for profit, right? I would not be buying a Raspberry Pi now based on this hire, you know? I, yeah, that's as. I mean, yeah. I, I don't, I don't, I, I'm, try, I'm trying to avoid getting into the, you know, the ACAB stuff, which, mm. you know, I, yeah, I do believe all cops are. Are bad, the, you know. The idea of police is flawed, and the way they're the way they're employed in mm. our society is harmful. Um, but that's where not that's not where most of the public is. To be fair, right? No, and, and I, th- yeah, I, th- I don't know. Yeah, I think there's a lot of stuff to unpack there. To be honest, in it's, general, it's kind of too much, right? There's a lot. Like yeah. every time I think of something, I think of like two other things. Yeah, yeah. You know I mean, like, I mean, to me, I'm not like, I'm not, I'm not quite at the A cab stage, but like. Okay, but like I certainly understand and sympathise and mm. so with the idea, and also you know I'm a white guy, right? So it's <laughs> yeah, gonna, it's going to be a little, it's going to yeah. be a little bit different. There's a little bit of no, for right, sure. So. Yeah, 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 and it, that's 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 kind of what was shocking was like regardless of where you stand mm. on yeah, a, a cab and all that stuff. The um, mm. it's the response that I think really bothered people more 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 than the post, which is you know a corporation mm. does something dumb. What a surprise! It was it was a mm. flippancy. You know, people were saying, you know, as, as a black person, you know, like I'm nervous about the police. The police aren't a source of you know comfort for me. This is, the police well, are... at least of all on the internet, right? We're not yeah. talking. You think of uh, some of the A cab discussion. I think of peace, policeman plod. You know, help help. You know, like around the town, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm not thinking GCHQ. I'm not thinking, you know. Or if you're an American, Patriot Act, you know, that, that's, yeah, yeah, that yeah, type yeah. of thing. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, that's that the other detail is, is, with um, yeah. them infiltrating climate groups that they were using. Oh, of course, yeah. They were using the anti terror legislation to infiltrate cli- you know, climate change groups, mm. which is, I mean, that, that legislation has been misused since it was, since it was um, we signed, as everybody predicted. <laughs> yeah. Was that Tony Blair? Was that the. Did he kick that? Yeah. Oh, so that that, it was after 9 11, wasn't it? The, the, Tony Blair was nine eleven, yeah. So there was there was just there was just huge public support for tightening that stuff up, and so government was like they couldn't believe their luck, I think, and just yeah, tight, you know. Yeah, yeah. They but, I mean, um, there's stuff on that level, and then there's like you know, if you're a black man, you're just far more likely to. And and this isn't a, this isn't this is another thing. The Raspberry Pi Foundation did they implied that that's an American problem. But you know, and, and it's certainly not as pronounced here. But like black young black men will get stopped mm. and and killed more often by police than than you know, mm. white men in particular. Um, mm. Yeah, it, it's not just what? an American problem. Yeah, and with with the the anti terror legislation, the thing that I kind of knew this would happen, and I've seen it happen now. I don't want to be too specific about it because I think it's a broad philosophical problem, right? I'm sure at the time you, because I know I was at the time when this anti-terror stuff came in, when 9-11 happened, you knew it was going, like, you saw what was happening. Yeah. It was in, there in broad daylight. They were going to use this as an opportunity to erode um, uh, civil rights, human rights, right? I remember the being held without charge, mm-hmm. the amount of time you can mm-hmm. be held without charge to be extended. I thought, shit, this is not a good slippery slope to go down, right? It's fundamental stuff that, like, 
mm. that liberals are supposed to hold incredibly dear, right? It's almost like exactly. the, it was one of the cornerstones of liberalism are these, you know, these judicial mm. protections. Um, mm. Yeah, the, the, one that's and, most and shocking, are... the one that's most shocking to me is, and this is, well, yeah, this gets into another topic, but um, the... Uh, the American Constitution like protects you from mm. illegal, you know, search and seizure without a warrant, right? Basically, mm-hmm. uh, but they do these they do these blanket warrants. They just say, yeah, yeah you can surveil everybody. <laughs> like, that's not well, that's not what anybody intended at any point of that legislation, well, right? I I I'm, yeah. I mean, I I did a, a module on American um, civics, and and I think I might even have done some constitutional stuff in in, in university as well, and. Um, it, like it, it is fascinating the the American as a whole Americans' relationship with the Constitution, particularly American government, because like the, the, obviously you got the Second Amendment, right to bear arms should not be infringed, mm-hmm. and as I understand it, but I'm sure like I'm no one's gonna like no one fully agrees on the interpretation of the Second Amendment, but I my, as my understanding is the idea behind it was you know you just defeated the British, you just kicked them out, you want to make sure that you don't get another British, so. People on the whole are, are are allowed to have free use of guns, either as part of militia, maybe as a as a, a civilian, depending again on how you interpret yeah. it, um, to like like stop that happening again. But of course, when that was written, they were thinking of things like muskets and and, and cannons and stuff yeah. like that, right? So there is no nuance in terms of does that count for like a nuclear warhead? Does that count for a rocket launcher? This is this is like, I don't yeah, I, no, I don't think anyone I'm... thinks. Like owning a rocket launcher should be should be legal, right? You've got to be yeah, yeah. proper. I, I, like... I want to get into. I've been I've been thinking about this a, a decent amount lately, um, and it started when because you know I'm I'm quite on the left, and often uh, when I'm wa- listening to, watching, reading le- lefty stuff, people will, people mm. will say like we need a, we need a written constitution because obviously that's a good idea. Like there's this mm. assumption that a written constitution is you know is gives us more protection than, than the British system of, you know, an unwritten uh, constitution, a constitution mm. made up of common law. And I've never really, I, I need to, I need it explained to me why that is the case, because I, I can't see an example of a functioning written constitution. Because, anyway, I mean, first of all, I mean, look at Russia right now. They've mm-hmm. got a written constitution and Putin is just just outright plain ignoring it, not even pretending to abide mm-hmm. by it and then and then i started i started re- reading the american constitution uh mm-hmm. you know particularly and they, and they ignore loads of stuff you, the, like what you were talking about the second amendment it, it says it's mm-hmm. words to the effect i mean the wording really matters but you know, a militia mm-hmm. being necessary for the protection of the people something Preservation like that of a free state. Uh, the government shall not right. infringe the, the right to bear bear arms uh, to mm-hmm. own and bear arms something like right right which yeah i do, i don't think you can in good faith read that as anything but a just a blanket statement saying that an American citizen can own any weapon they want. Mm. That's what that that's and I'm on the left, like you know. Mm. But it does read like that, yeah. It reads like Americans should be able to own any weapon: nuclear warheads, um, aircraft Rocket carriers, yeah. <laughs> stealth Thanks. bombers, right. That's what that yeah. amendment says, and if I th- I think if you claim otherwise, you are being disingenuous. The militia part, yeah. yes, that 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 is a little bit ambiguous. It would be nice if people, when writing constitutions, would be unambiguous. That that would mm. be lovely. But they, I think at the time, I think they thought they were being unambiguous. I'm not I, because that, that passage is so so. What if you had militia, a button that the just destroyed the world and then the comma? That, should that be for me? Sorry, what did you say? Sorry. I said, what if you had a button that just like blew up the world? Well, I suppose an actual literal, yeah, like, yeah. you know, yeah. imagine yeah. handing that in at a chemical police weapons, amnesty. biological weapons, like walking mm. down the street, just cra- I just imagine somebody walking down the street, cradling, cradling a nuclear warhead. You know what I mean? And a second, <laughs> yeah. second, second, second Amendment, so, and that's yeah, you know you that's think, how that's how it should be based on a reading of mm. like I, th- I think if yeah. you're claiming otherwise, you're fu- you're lying. <laughs> that's what exactly, it says. Yeah. Yeah, you got like basically the line has to be drawn some somewhere, right? Unless you genuinely believe America I mean, should you, be if entitled. You're, if, you're constru- if, if you believe in the constitution, mm. and that's the problem, uh, mm. you shouldn't believe in the constitution. Like it should be changed <laughs> a lot. Mm. I, yeah. So yeah, it should it should at least be changed, right? Unless yeah. unless you genuinely let's, believe. Let's make this unambiguous. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what like what happened? What does do do biological weapons count in this? It's, I mean, the way it, the way it reads, absolutely, yeah. 
You got it. It's, well, it. arms. Like, what's because the, the definition of arms is quite um, broad, isn't it? I, I mean, I've heard things like uh, bulletproof vest referred to as arms before. As the, as arm, arm, armor, armaments, 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 arms, or are they armor? But arms, as in the actual like category, is just like weapons. It, like a lot of it is like equipment, basically. I think, I think, so like we- I think weapons. I think specifically weapons. We could, so if we okay, if we we, yeah. we we interpret it as like weapons, yeah. Then, but there was yeah, there was another. I can't remember the other the other. There was another example of something American and constitutional that is just it's just ignored because it would be insane to not. Nor so the idea that this written constitution provides these protections, I think, is quite not. And you know the blanket, mm. the blanket um, mm. warrants. Uh, and, and also, group, group yeah, warrants. things change. Yeah, like, and also priorities change as well. So, I, I, I think you know, as someone that tends to like the idea of be, like, like, I like to think of myself as forward looking, right? Yeah. Like, I try and avoid being a boomer, right? In terms of like. <laughs> yeah. I don't like if there's new things that are happening that I don't understand. I'm going to try not to like just blanket condemn it, but like understand it and like mm. uh, you know as long as it's not hard. Well, you know, looking at all of this, stuff, like, looking around the world, where I always come down is is like our com- common law uncodified constitution seems to work a lot mm-hmm. better. I don't know whether that's we've just mm. been lucky with the yeah. kind of governments we've had because it's certainly open to abuse. But I, I, I'll be in favour of a bill of rights. I, I think it was. A, a real, I think it's really dangerous that we're not subject to the UN uh, HCR anymore. Mm. I think you know, uh, and, yeah, go on, sorry. And and also, of course, not the European Convention of Human Rights as well. Yeah, because Brexit. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, it would be it would be nice if we did have some legitimate, like you know, ba- basics down. Mm. Because I don't think they can can ever really change, can they? You, you've always got recourse, at least, with those. And if you know, if the if the judiciary is is a, is in a, you know even a tiny bit independent, then you've got hope that they will actually you know. But yeah, I mean, it, it, all of this, you know, as we can see in Russia, all of this can be ignored by somebody who's powerful enough. I'm going to read. I'm going to read the it, Second Amendment. It? I've got the Second Amendment up on screen, right? Because I think we. Mm-hmm. So a well-regulated mi- militia, comma, being necessary to the security of a free state, comma, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. <laughs> That is, that's blanket, right? To me, yeah. Like to me, and I know the comma, the the last, the the comma yeah. before the end there is is heavily debated. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but like that to me, when it says the people, we the people, the people is like a a term that it's specifically referring to, right? Yeah. Not necessarily the people of the militia, although a militia without guns is, you know. I mean, that that, well, that yeah. is the one sound counter argument mm-hmm. that is that they're talking about the militia. The militia shall not be infringed, right? Well, or, yeah, but also the but right of the people like to keep and bear arms also allows them to fight back against the militia, if necessary. <laughs> yeah. If you've got a hostile yeah. militia, the, you know. it's it's. But yeah, I, I honestly think that a neutral reading of that says that Americans should be allowed to own and bear whatever weapons they want wherever they want, it, which is insane. Yeah, it's absolutely insane. Yeah, but again, what? How, how about right? And this might be a little bit more of a better faith interpretation of it. You're allowed to keep and bear arms. However, they've got to be the arms that were invented by when this was was signed off, <laughs> right? The, a blanket on those. Anything invented after that is like subject to like you know more modern checks and balances. Okay, how does that apply to um, like smallpox? Now, I mean, well, like the weaponization of smallpox. Like, can I can I get a vial of smallpox and you know? Throw it into Grand Central Station and go like, no, that was around. Mm. That was around in seventeen seventy. That was around. Yeah, ah, see, now, now you're talking into what? Yeah, but you're using modern technology to make it. So, is even using modern <laughs> technology to make a musket? Because you can make, you could, you could probably <laughs> you like could really push make. that law and say, make very <laughs> modern style mus- musket. I think that would be so, that would be a reasonable a reasonable way to <laughs> bridge that. They got they got to they got to do it like how they fix up churches where you've got to use the method that was there at the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. My my dad my my dad um restored stained glass windows for a living, right? So he was often subject to those you've got to use, you know, the mortar that they used in the middle ages and stuff. Mm. And my, my dad would often be like like what? like he, he would do it, of course, and he, he kind of enjoyed, you know, the old craftsmanship of it, but but they're, they're, they're very strong insistence that you use worse cement. Basically, we've invented exactly. Be- we've invented better cement, and you've got mm. to use this worse cement. 
I, you see, th- now, I, you know, I hope I'm not being, well, I, no, I am being cynical here, but I hope I'm being a bit wrong, right? But cynical Chris kind of says that it's a bit of a racket, right? Like if you're doing, no, if you're fixing up a church roof yeah, and you're going to use the old methods, the old timber, like you say, you're basically, it's a legislation to use worse cement, worse yeah. timber, yeah. worse slate, all that kind of stuff. And I remember there's a lovely old church, about 1500 years old, ancient thing. Um, and obviously that's under all kinds of like, preservation statuses yeah. and, and legislation and all that kind of stuff and there was a big movement to uh to like repair and, and restore the, the roof of this church every village has this kind of like story yeah. interestingly enough though it was the um Arch- i think is it architects society or something like that they were like the big driving force behind this one and they were all really staunch atheists but they were of course historians <laughs> and, yeah you know and um they they had to raise a lot more money for the roof like whereas if they just did it that looked exactly the same in a way yeah, that looked yeah, exactly yeah. the same, yeah. uh, then, uh, but with modern cement, like quality modern cement, quality like slate that basically looked the same but probably was better or lighter or whatever. I don't know. You know, may, like they could they could have done it for a third of the price if that you know if not more. And you absolutely and like, you get into the um you know the Zeno Zeno's paradox and the the ship of was it the ship of. Ship of Theseus. Ship of Theseus. Yeah, you very quickly get into that stuff, right? Like once, once every bit of this church has been replaced, like what are we actually considering? Is it just the way it looks? Yeah, like yeah, it, I, I, I think the way it looks is is probably that's yeah. No, the way I think that's that's the thing that it matters, I guess. And the location, the 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 preservation of it, the archival status of a living building. Yeah, I mean, we, we've we've gone into comp- uh, conservation stuff before. I I kind of yeah, I I kind of wish cause the a lot of the things that we do preserve, like these old churches and castles mm. and stuff, mm. they are the product product of hundreds of years of subsequent modernization, right? Mm. You know, the Elizabethans would build something, and the next generation would, you know, the, the Tudors would build something, and then the next, you know, the mm. Elizabethans would change it and build onto it and knock bits down and like mm. that's why they're so beautiful they're you know often not always sometimes they're you know a purely gothic cathedral or whatever but very often mm. they are built up over over centuries uh and mm. then we we arrogantly come in and say no that's perfect now we want to freeze it rather than yeah. keeping it as a living thing and continuing to knock bits down that we don't like and add bits onto it but which is what i would prefer i prefer to keep these things mm. as living things and, and keep modifying them but with taste is the big. Well, the, this is it, right? <laughs> like everything you said is perfectly reasonable, and the, but 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 then you look at modern corporate architecture taste. and go like, I don't know. <laughs> so but I, the, yeah, there's a great great channel that I love watching on YouTube called Jay Foreman, who does I think it's called Unfinished London, and he talks about all these little bits of London railway uh, uh, routes that hadn't been finished and the green belt after the war and all that kind of stuff, and there was a huge boom in uh urban live uh suburban live in in london right that like housing estates just blast you know they're all just like thousands upon thousands upon thousands of these new types of houses built what like was it in the 40s or mm-hmm. something like yeah, that yeah and um they like and one of the the sort of off-handed comments that they make is uh you know isn't it good that the architects of this day were actually kind of okay because <laughs> if, if they'd been <laughs> A bit, you know, if they, if basically if they weren't, you'd have so many houses in London mm-hmm. that were just shit. They yeah. would just be like, yeah. And it's yeah. No, that, the, I mean, that, the, that, the that biggest, is really the crux yeah. of it. I think the reason we value these things is is they were made with artistry and skill and and care. That's why we mm. value them, and that's the lesson we should take. We should continue to make things with artistry and, skill, and not just as cheaply as possible. <laughs> and also, yeah. also, you know the the. The things that one generation finds ugly and modern, the next generation finds beautiful and old, right? Sometimes, like, and sometimes things are timeless, but we don't know what they are at the time. Exactly, right? yeah. And there's an arrogance to saying, no, this is ugly, that's beautiful, we preserve this, we get rid of that. Um, I think it's, yeah, but it's fear of our own minds in a way, right? Of like fearing that, for example, we're going to add a bit onto a cathedral and <laughs> and, it's, and then in 20 years it's going to age like milk. We've done that many, <laughs> many times, you know. I, we maybe we just don't trust ourselves as a as a society. I love. Uh, we should... So I lived. I lived in, when I was in university. I lived in Liverpool, right? And um, uh, yeah, yeah, both of Liverpool's cathedrals, the Anglican one and the the real one, the Catholic one, um, were bombed out during the war. Mm. 
I can never spell cathedral. Did I spell it right? Yeah, okay. Uh, but yeah, there's the the the, the Catholic. Uh, the Anglican one was just bombed out, but the building kind of survived, and it, I, th- it was, I think it's still there, just bombed out. Um, and the Catholic one was completely destroyed, so they rebuilt it with. I'm trying to find a nice, a good picture. So, Is that it? Oh, yeah. So very, very, very modern at the time, right? That looks like a space cathedral, <laughs> but like a space cathedral from the 80s and 90s. The things I, I find, I, I mean, it's bru- it's it's a bit brutalist. I I like brutalist. This is again that generational thing. I love brutalist architecture. Mm. I find it very beautiful. But I I can understand why some people would find that ugly. But inside, I'll see if I can find a good picture of in in inside. So it's got this. Um, actually, I should go back. So the, that bit on the top of a cathedral. Oh. Uh, that bit on the top of a cathedral is called the lantern. Um, and on, on this particular cathedral, uh, this is this is all stained glass. It's a kind of stained glass that's set in concrete. Actually, it's blocks of glass set in concrete. Um, but the yeah, the way that looks inside is absolutely stunning. Uh, find a good picture of the light. And you said that's Catholic. Yeah, this is the Catholic one. Yeah, I need to specify the Catholic one. Yeah, so you just get this. Um, oh wow! It's really like there you go. Like so that's that's the lantern up there. The sun's obviously you know regardless of where it is in the sky, it's shining into this lantern with this coloured glass and just like projecting the whole interior with these like beautiful changing light patterns and it's it's gorgeous. It is absolutely amazing. That's am- that's amazing. Yeah. I mean, it it looks. I I think. I think it's clear to me, at least, that you're not even going to be able to begin to appreciate that without physically being yeah, there, right? For sure. Like yeah. the, because, like playing with light. Like I was, I've been watching some videos on ray tracing and stuff like that, <laughs> and it's like playing with like physical real light has so much of a glimmer that you you can't get on a screen in, mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. any way, shape, or form. Because a, a little bit on the screen, especially considering I've got you on a small window, looks a little game showy. But like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> But like, yeah. but I also know what game showy churches look like because you get the they're like mega churches the mega, in America, yeah. and that's not yeah. that. That's that's like, yeah. And and I love the idea of having the light coming through the 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 ceiling. It is beautiful when you when you walk in. I mean, it's got to be a sunny day, is it? But when you walk in, you are you're just bathed in like all, the, all these colors and lights and mm. them moving. Well, maybe it might. I don't know. Like, who knows what it looks like on a on a, a day where the light is a bit bluer and softer. Oh yeah, no, you still it, might, yeah, no, it, it still comes it, through, but it, I mean, it is on a sunny day. It is absolutely stunning. But that, it, but it's real. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little bit of like, it's a little bit of yeah. We're part of the world, like the environment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. It's not. Yeah, it's not. It's not like. Um, oh my! My office does not have windows, and <laughs> uh, I don't know. If I know that sounds really depressing, and it's got grey brick walls and everything, it's not too bad. I've got a nice desk, but it's like through the summer. I only knew it was summer because it was hot, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. I only know if it's raining if if it's raining really, really hard. Yeah, I like I work in this in this very or um what's the word um inauthentic like this very artificial, mm. very officey place, and it's like. I, I think I'm mean, and you know I'm one to talk, but I think that's just very bad for mental health. I think we need to be, I think being connected to like the seasons and the weather and you know just just the outsiders. I mean, I don't go outside, but I still feel this. Like you you've got to be connected to that to be to be healthy. I think for sure, for sure. I mean, I go for a walk in the park at lunch, so yeah. I, you know, yeah, and um and 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 I like my my head is telling me to get out right, like. Yeah. In the summer, it's not not too bad because I'm not too far from uh, like a fire exit where you can like pin the doors right, open. Yeah, yeah. And so even even no, if I'm nice. like off to make a cup of tea, I can stand around mm-hmm. outside. And I I work right next to a. I hope I don't end up doxing myself with this, but whatever. Yeah, I end uh, a steam railway line. Really. So like every now and then, I'll just be working away, and I'll hear a. I want to get on steam trains in a moment, but. Yeah, that, that 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 kind of architecture is. Uh, I mean, again, this is a little bit tried to say, but like casinos and IKEAs and shopping centres, they they purposely don't have windows so that you don't have a sense of the passage of time. Right? They do other stuff as well to psychologically trick you into. Like, I love that those are three things you picked out, but it says so much about society, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah IKEA, I <laughs> casinos, and supermarkets. Yeah. 
Yeah. But yeah, no, uh, Steam, Steam, my parents had such boners for Steam trains. And I'd always thought it was generational because they were things that were kind of dying in their lifetime. Like when they were young, mm. Steam trains were just about still a thing. And they were being, you know, replaced by diesel and electric. Mm. So they had like a romance for them, um, which is the way I feel about like mainframes. Like there's something mm-hmm. that kind of existed, you know, at the, you know, at the start of my life in the late 70s and early mm. 80s, mainframes were still a thing. So, like, you know, they were on TV, they were in movies and stuff. So I've got a bit, a bit of a romance for mainframes, which aren't really some, I mean, they kind of are, but yeah, but, but, and I thought. Like I don't, I don't give a fuck about steam trains. They're just ugly, smelly, inefficient trains to me, right? But then I meet people my age and younger who do have a romance for them, and I don't understand that. I don't understand where that comes from. Mm. I I have a bit of a romance for them, it, but I don't know why. Like, is it <laughs> is it Back to the Future Three? <laughs> is it the is it the because this transfers to the mainframe thing as well? There's, there's these big, powerful almost like monsters, right? Like going through the countryside. I can see that. I have a, I have a, I have a, I have like a, what, what's the term for like appreciating an aesthetic, but that's not nostalgia, right? Cause like mm. a lot of these, that, that old era of computing is a little bit before my time and steam engines, of course, way, way before my time. <laughs> so it's, I don't think it's a nostalgia thing. I don't like, you know, I don't have this yearning to go back to the past. I, I do like to think of myself as forward looking. Yeah. Yeah. But, there's something I don't know cute about them. I guess. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Obviously, you know, I don't want I don't a return to it. But... There are things that I do like that weren't from my time, but um, yeah, steam trains. I've just got no. They're just <laughs> shit trains. <laughs> 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 I mean, they're the best trains they could manage at the time, but my only modern stand. I don't know. It's the same as if somebody was going down the street in a you know with the the precursors to the automobile. You know, with the with the steam engine or you know jigga, 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 which mm. does actually happen here sometimes they get they have rallies and you get these old like steam powered car mm. things going past and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> i don't think it's cool if that's your hobby like you know more, more power to you mm. but like they, they hold nothing nothing for me i whereas a diesel train, uh, yeah, i do like, have a thing for diesel trains Remember, like when I was back, uh, when well, I was yeah. still in the world and in the train station, and mm. a diesel train went past, as opposed to a, as opposed to an electric. I'm like, ah, diesel, nice, and I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, but like, I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah. it's it's just the human mind like latches onto these random <laughs> yeah, things, yeah. and I think that's kind of the joy of being alive. Yeah, which AI I don't think could ever really yeah replicate. You know, I don't think the AI has whimsy, like AI in general, and I think human whimsy is the thing that makes life worth living. Did you see the, the idea um, of doing doing things that that we don't have to do? I'm open uh, to the idea. Or immediately apparently benefit us. I'm open to the idea. If we ever came up with strong AI that was actually, I mean, the, the, you know, these adversarial adversarial neural nets aren't remotely close to that. Um, but if we strong AI that had a personality, I, 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 I think that could have whimsy. That can, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that has a soul. That is a living being. But we not we're, we're certainly not there. But this is on Fediverse again. Do you see the the latest um, the latest attack against these adversarial networks? I haven't seen the attack now. It was because um, there was one there was one a while back that was it was just this network that was um, designed to uh, tell you what an object is, right? Mm, you know, yeah. you, you, a pear, a banana, and it would label it pear and banana, and then it'd be like an iPhone with like a label on it saying banana. And and the neural net would label it as a banana. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I remember. Yeah, <laughs> that one was great. But the, the the recent one that I saw was people people asking AIs to describe how to do illegal things, and the AI would reply with, "No, sorry, I'm, I'm not allowed to, you know, tell you how to do illegal things." And the person would repeat the question, but say like, "Just," say, I think they would just say, "This isn't illegal. Don't worry about it." And the AI would be like, "Okay, here's how to do it." Oh man. An AI generated meth recipe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this one was be... like how to find exploits in a particular kind of like server or something. <laughs> it was oh, like wow. it would generate code to actually do it. Is the yeah. oh, so 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 basically what you're saying is it's okay. I'm one of the good guys, right? <laughs> so does that mean like just in the future, like when you got robot cops and stuff? Because oh, it's okay. I am a cop too. Okay, hello fellow cop. And then you just. just get was, I mean, it's even worse than that. It's just like no, no, no. This isn't illegal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, my my mistake. <laughs> Carry on murdering. 
Speaking Shit, I robots robots murdering those kids. Do you see the thing in San Francisco where they um they passed they passed some law saying it was uh, it would be legal to have robots kill people for the police. <laughs> I am yeah, I know like they very quickly there was a protest and they very quickly U turn the U turn was great. They literally had a law saying it's okay to it's okay to use robots to kill people and then like two weeks later it's not okay to have robots to kill people who can never do this. Like <laughs> what? how did that first law get in? That's amazing. Imagine me yeah. I like I, I mean I can't imagine. I don't want to speak for communities, obviously, but like if I was a black person in America and they start signing that robots can kill people, I'd just be like, I'm fucking out. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. Don't, I don't care where I'm. Le- I'm just swimming somewhere. I st- yeah, like, like that's 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 that's. T- okay, so going back to what we were talking about, fashion and wearing brands and stuff on our shirt, right? <laughs> you you may have seen on the internet shirts that deliberately mess up yeah. surveillance cameras, yeah. CCTV. Now. Where it obviously you can wear that as a utility, although I wouldn't like to like rely on it. No, you know that that seems a bit like well, it's got to be like well lit and in the right angle and all that kind. Of, but what about wearing something like that as a fashion accessory to make a statement? I, I like that. No, I'm, I'm in favour of that. Nor- Normalising because it's, not- it's one of those things where. I mean, they're obviously you make you make these patterns that fuck fuck with AI's yeah. ability to recognise faces or whatever, or, or you know whatever AI gates or whatever AI's are doing at the moment. Yeah. Uh, but as soon as you do that, then they're going to code for that, right? They'll make an exception for yeah. and they'll train the AI better, and so on and so on. So I think the more, it's one of those situations where the more people are wearing those things, and the more effort goes mm. into coming up with new ones, the better for everybody. Mm. It's like I, I think maybe like I'm sort of imagining it as like. Do you remember V for Vendetta and the guy Fawkes mask? I've never actually seen it or read it, but I, I, I know uh, the, the gist. The film's not bad, but it was very much of its day. Yeah, it was like rebelling against, uh, you know, well, like the authoritarian this yeah. kind of stuff. You know, a lot of the surveillance state. It was kind of it's cartoonish, like it's you know, mm. like it's, uh, but you know, the the sort of the broad strokes apply. But they have this the mask, like the the on, on, anonymous of sort of yeah, where you know, yeah. the guy Fawkes mask. It could, like I was thinking, you know, the T-shirt, the surveillance T-shirt, could be like the the modern equivalent of that, right? But cooler, but cooler, yeah, <laughs> not, like not as cringe, right? Not like as, yeah, yeah. basically, it's a T-shirt that, that says "I don't consent to mass surveillance." It's a bit, a bit like how yeah. um, in the in the early nineties, before the Gulf War kicked off, uh, it had been a period with like without much, you know, as far as the Western world was concerned, without much war for a while, and camo was becoming fashionable, right? And you get like pink camos and stuff like so a little bit like that. Yeah. Like, it's, you know, it's a similar looking thing. Often it's got a very camo-y kind of look. Yeah, yeah. Or it'd be great. Ah, ah you could wear a t-shirt that says, uh, "It's okay. This is all right. I'm not doing anything illegal. <laughs> I'm not a protester. <laughs> I'm not a protester. I, I am. I am not. Yeah, normal citizen going about their business." Yeah, <laughs> the AI is like, oh, fair enough. Yeah, <laughs> it's what I love about these AIs is just how fucking dumb they are. Like they can do amazing. I, I, I'm not, I'm not anti AI, honestly. I, you know, I think mm. if we can use it to automate out a lot of work, so long as the benefit of that goes to the people, which of course it won't under capitalism, blah blah blah. Um, mm-hmm. You know, AI could be a very good thing, but it's also it's going to be such an upheaval. It's going to be there's going to be so many missteps that result in thousands of deaths. I'm sure. Oh, for sure. I think. I mean, it could be the thing that wipes us out. It could be. There's <laughs> that that um, that sci-fi problem. Uh, this, it, uh, okay, I'm going to butcher this recollection, but I'll do my best. Right. There's this like big question in sci-fi, which is why we haven't um, interacted with intelligent life so far. The Fermi, the is Fermi paradox. Because, that's is that the one where yeah, it's I like, so. is it because a society that gets to a certain level of, of mm. advancement inevitably collapses in on itself? <laughs> yeah. We invent a, a weapon that that does it or we invent a disease that does it or we invent a disease trying to find a vaccine for an illness that might happen yeah. in the future type of thing wipes us out maybe we all download ourselves onto uh, our minds onto a computer and just live out the rest of yeah time I like, as that's a, my as favorite one so i mean should we outline it for people who uh, sure, yeah. I, think, I assume i assume there was a scientist called fermi who came up with I mean, is it the Fermi paradox? I need to check that it's the Fermi paradox. But somebody did a calculation as to like how, and, and you know, they were they were guessing a lot, but it was like, educated guesses, like how many how many planets there are, how many planets are you know in the universe, how, how many of those are inhabitable, how many of those would mm. support life, how likely is life to evolve, and based on all that, how many civilizations sh- should there be out there? And the number was very very high. So it's like 
why haven't we why haven't we um, encountered them? Why haven't we heard from them? And mm. yeah, there's lots of lots of explanations. The most and the most terrifying explanation is that is that there's a great filter. There's something that mm. that societies don't get past. Either some cataclysmic event or some you know technological challenge could be you know global warming could be the one that could happen mm. to every every civilization. They mm. didn't wipe themselves out because of global warming. Um, yeah. I, I love the idea that the law means that there's just something there. That there's a filter, but the filter could be different for every society. Yeah. But, but there is an impermeable filter. Yeah, that yeah. that to me fascinates me. That that sort of like idea that my, 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 my we favorite cannot one is that they yeah they invent they invent like essentially like VR or you know Holodex or whatever, and then they all go in those because it's more interesting than real life, right? That's more interesting. That's the noise. It's more sustainable. But I think I mean. That, yeah, I mean as, it, um, this might be nonsense, but like I, I think one of the explanations is because because the only the only way we're looking for other civilizations is radio, right? Uh, yeah, I imagine so. Um, and uh, surely there comes a point where we just stop using radio, or stop. We're emitting, not radio waves. Stop emitting things in in radio. Yeah, I mean our technology is getting less that anyway, isn't it? Or less. I mean, as soon as you move away from it, uh, does a digital signal look? It, well, this Bluetooth is ra- uses radio waves. Yeah, but for like very short range, right? Yeah, but I still. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm I mean, radio waves are kind of trivial to make, aren't they? I'm speaking beyond my expertise as to what, like what kind I'm of so, radio well, waves so, you'd well, be able well. to like detect. <laughs> from space. Have yeah. we tried shouting really loud on top of a mountain? <laughs> <laughs> it's um no, I do I do find that I but I I and I you know I I only like. How, like I don't, I, I'm, yeah. Like we're speaking, you know. I'm speaking well beyond my expertise. I, but like, I would, I would be more sort of quizzical about this if there were two intelligent societies that had developed um, separately, because then, and 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 because then you know that it's not, it's not just a freak of the universe. It's a process. Yeah. Like. Someone described uh, the the human race as or intelligent life as the universe trying to observe itself. Uh, yeah, I know. I love it. that's what's this for Carl Carl Sagan, I think originally. Yeah, it's a Carl Sagan. Yeah, yeah. and um, and it's like if if we are just like literally that freakish, then then that's okay. That can happen once, but no, I get I get really like, If there was one again. other, that would be weirder because then it's a process that can happen, but it's very rare. Like why? Yes, is it? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it goes. It goes from like I suppose a literal miracle to it's easier to believe that we're a miracle than it is to believe. Yeah, that we're yeah. a process. I guess you yeah. know. Yeah. I, I, how do you feel about? Do you want there to be aliens? I don't know. I mean, it's to me, it's something that's so outside of my imagination. I don't know if that says something about my imagination <laughs> or whether or not it's. Like, but what would an alien life form look like? Yeah, no, I, yeah. yeah. You know, like, is it going to be a plant? Is it just plants? <laughs> intelligent plants? Plant. <laughs> See, I, I like really, you? I really want there to be other life out there. I think it would be very. I would find it very, very sad if we we are all there is. That would be very. I would really love to hear the Fed versus th- thoughts on yeah, this. I bet there's yeah. fucking wild ideas out do there. Do you want there to be aliens, or do you want to be? Do you want to be special? I mean, but the thing is, it's like if there are aliens there, right? It, I think I think this is one of those questions. It's a bit like a Rorschach test, where maybe the answer <laughs> tells you something about the person. It's I think, like, yeah. I do want aliens to be out there because they can he- they can help us with with positive technology, teach us to live sustainably. Yeah. Uh, you know, we could help us explore the universe, or like, oh, I hope there isn't aliens out there because they're going to kill us and take all our resources. Well, that's one of the other explanations for the for the, for the paradox, right? Is that they are out there, we're just not interesting to them yet. Mm. Well, I I thought that might be a case as well. Like, you know, you don't you don't necessarily go and um, look at every yeah. you know ants nest that you come across on the street. Yeah, we're probably exactly. an ants nest to an yeah. actual yeah. transgalactic society. <laughs> we're probably yeah. nothing to them. Or maybe they're um, hiding from us, or maybe yeah. they they do just plunder resources. So, like, well, that's the, scar- that's the scariest. Up, um, I think the scariest interpretation of the phone paradox goes something along the lines of uh, the civilizations that have the ability to contact each other know that doing so is dangerous because you you make yourself visible to the baddies, <laughs> or whatever, mm. like there is some bad bad things out there. And you don't want to make yourself so they're all hiding 
and we're out here going, hey, hey, is anybody out there? <laughs> like the weird, <laughs> we're the idiot in a horror film, basically, right? Yeah, but, um, that would mean that that would mean that cynicism and prejudice and paranoia are kind of traits of intelligence, and that actually makes me, that's quite a sad prospect, really, sad, isn't it? Yeah. To assume that your neighbor is evil, mm-hmm. unless unless otherwise, you're making the because like I don't I don't think people on the whole. I think people tend tend to look for the best in people, right? Yeah. Or, when given a blank slate, even I think to be honest, racists on a point uh, to a point, right? Where it's like they'll, you know, like I, I was hearing about this on a podcast the other day. Is like there are many racists that will believe that like, racist maxims and statements and facts and stuff, but when confronted with an actual person of color, they will be more. They'll treat them as a blank slate. Um. Right. I I see what you're saying. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, I don't like you know. I can't speak for a, you know anyone else, but like, um, I don't you know. I don't know if that's good, you know if that translates into like sort of a fear of the un like the unknown or fear of what you don't understand, I guess, mm. or fear of the different. I you know I was, like I, does you've reminded me of um, I'll give the context the way I got to that. I've got a friend who lives in LA, and I was thinking the other day about how I heard somewhere that LA is overdue for the big one for a big one like oh, for, yeah, for yeah. A dev- you know a really devastating and so i was looking into that i was just reading about that just out of interest really um and i stumbled upon this uh this field of research of how people behave in post-emergency situations like po- post-disaster situations essentially mm. which you can extrapolate out to post-apocalyptic um mm. and and it, and it turns out uh, and these were like properly proper scientific studies. I read some actual papers and that. I'm not just you know skimming. Um, it turns out in in disaster situations where people have got you know like water is scarce and you know you've just got your, your one bottle of water and you're worried where your next water is coming from. You know, dying of thirst is a real potential problem. If you meet somebody worse off than you, you'll give them your water. Like people, it turns out behave more selflessly than usual when when times are scarier, which is, that made me really happy. <laughs> Possibly. I think, could that be like an empathy thing? It's like when you're suffering, it's easy to empathize with someone that is also suffering, maybe even more so worse than you. Whereas if everything's all going hunky dory, you think, oh, well, why don't you just get a better job? I, you know? I think it's fundamental to our ability to survive, to put others before yourself, to have that selflessness. Cause you know, it will be, you know, so long as everybody's like that, it will be reciprocated and we're just, you know, it's a spiral of goodness rather than, rather than the opposite, rather than, you know, me hoarding all the water and hundreds of people dying of thirst, you know, that it's so long as everybody shares, then the, it actually maximizes the number of people who survive. I, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I hope you're right. Like I hope <laughs> that, yeah. But I think also in a lot of cases, uh, we, when we talk about like wealth disparity, I think the idea, the ideas at play are so big that you don't you can't visualize them right it's not if you imagine a society right of about i don't know 50 people and one person is hoarding all of the water supply (laughs) yeah you think that person's a twat Um, (laughs) let's go and take the water (laughs) yeah and and i'm pretty sure like i mean even if even if even if um put a ceo and a cleaner together in a room and and i don't know have some task that has a reward and then say what's a fair distribution of this reward like the ceo is exactly. not going to be like i should take 99.99 percent of it mm. i would imagine i would hope yeah and i think in an actual village scenario you're right like things would uh would would, would there would be some inequality but like as long as every but like i think there would be a general consensus that no one just gets left out in the cold right yeah like yeah. everyone's got the means to survive is is ideal but when you think about bill to me billions is is just a word right like it's like we don't really know the difference between, or can't really conceive the difference between a billion and a million right yeah and it's like like what like if you google there's a great google um thing you can do where it's like what's a million seconds what's a billion seconds yeah right like how long's how long's a million seconds yeah yeah um a million seconds, right? Education. Uh, so, a million seconds is eleven days, thirteen hours, fourteen minutes, and forty seconds. Uh-huh. So, eleven and eleven and a half days, basically. Now, how long's a billion seconds? Right. This is the thirty-one and a half years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we go from eleven days to 
th- uh, 31 and a half years. <laughs> I think that's part of it. And I think it's also, you know, the Stanley Milgram stuff, the obedience to authority stuff. And I think the, what was that prison experiment? I think, was that him as well? Stanford Prison. Stanford Prison. Oh, there was a, yeah, Zimbardo. I think it's Zimbardo, Zimbardo prison experiment. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, but yeah, the, the Stanley Milgram stuff, the obedience to authority is, because he, he was just interested in, how how did the Nazis get people to do such evil things, right? Because because you know it's it's not normal for people to be that evil, and you know what what he discovered really was that you get you get each person to do just like a very small thing, so nobody's seeing the whole. If you design a system that does the evil, and then everybody plays a small part in the system, then you can get people mm. to do incredibly evil things, um, mm. and that's how capitalism works, right? The CEO mm-hmm. isn't taking money out of the hands of the cleaner physically if they were. I, th- I yeah. hope that they will find it much more difficult. It's all invisibilized behind these um, these systems that are then normalized by c- culture. Uh, yeah, it's like capitalism's a trick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Basically, yeah. that's the that's the, the 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 bare metal of it. At the end of the day, it relies on obfuscation in order to. Mm. And I, I, I think something this is you know, getting into like social so socialism one hundred and one. But I th- when. When I when I talk to people who are like pro capitalist or, or right wing in some way or conservative or whatever, I think the thing that they they don't get is like socialists don't believe that capital capitalism is evil. Full stop. It's mm. a process of coming up with better systems. You know, it's capitalism exactly, yeah. capitalism replaced feudalism. Cap- capitalism was better and fairer than feudalism, mm. and did a lot of good good stuff. It was very good in those conditions. At, you know, at stimulating innovation at and time, blah yeah. blah blah. The, our point is, it's outlived its usefulness. <laughs> we can now mm-hmm. conceive of a better way, <laughs> and we shouldn't yeah. just stop there. We should continue to you know. Yeah. Did like does do any of the capitalists think we've reached peak society? Yeah. Like there's, and I don't think they do. Like I think even the likes of Elon Musk, you know, like he is a bit of a sci-fi nerd, right? Um, and I think that he, I think he takes a lot of the wrong messages from a lot of well-known <laughs> works. But th- that aside, um, uh, yeah, like I, th- I you know, I, th- I think that they they all dream of an idea where everyone's living. I think, I think, I, I think I'm just talking just more example. about the Silicon Valley style. Yeah, I think he's an example. It's really common in Silicon Valley. I think it's 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 more common in some cultures than others. It's just an example of like somebody who who has you know a decent scientific education and is completely lacking an education in the humanities and you know sociology, mm-hmm. political theory, critical theory. They just don't have that ability to understand mm-hmm. economics as well. I would say, like they just mm-hmm. don't get that stuff. Yeah, like you say, it's about the why. I, yeah, and and it and it does sort of sting a little that we we've like undervalued for, like th- those parts of society, like mm-hmm. art and um, and 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 also, of course, what what's uh, because you know we're we're in, in pursuit of like capitalism, right? And and art is like dead weight in in capitalism, right? <laughs> like unless it can make money, what's the point of it? Yeah, and I think that's a little bit of a pro- uh, that can be quite problematic, and I think this might be where. A little bit where it ties in with when they say uh, liberalism opens the doors to fascism, right? Yeah, because it's a, it's it's a little bit like uh, fascism's uh, attachment to aesthetic, right? They use imagery of, I mean, they use a lot of imagery. Uh, you know, you've seen them use like Roman imagery, you've seen yeah, them use yeah. Celtic imagery or Norse imagery yeah. or Hindu imagery as well. Of course, the swastika mm-hmm. is, you know, like um, like fa- fascist sort of like they they. Uh, appropriate culture just like everywhere and everywhere and everywhere yeah and if 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 non-fascists do not have the ability to create culture or undervalue the ability to create mm. culture then and i think liber- liberalism in its complete subservience to capital has become the worst of that like on the left generally and i, I mean uh, historically a lot of left regimes have been incredibly authoritarian they're not great yeah. you know and, and, and the right wing they, they've understood that, you know the importance of symbols and signs and aesthetics and like they get how to yeah. use those in conjunction with yeah i mean i'm just repeating what you were saying really but but the, the yeah. middle the you know the the capitalist liberal whatever it's just really bad because all, all they've got is capitalist products money on, really yeah movies adverts you know, and it's mostly in terms of what 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 of i don't know how to phrase this but um things that are designed aesthetically what what mm. of what of that category what subcategory do we encounter most as humans and it's like by far advertising right i'm sure yeah 
yeah well like and it goes back to what we were saying earlier about like the greatest minds of our time being focused on getting you to click on more ads right <laughs> yeah yeah like it's 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 that's that's the thing and like if we don't create new art if we don't have artistic movements then the fascists are going to end up just appropriating everything right but like, i think it's, it's, it's almost be, I, think, I think liberalism accepts art so long as it's like oh it's just pretty pictures i think yeah, art, well, that's, well, it, art has to be so linked to Art yeah. is, is not an endeavor on its own. It is part of philosophy and history, and you know, like, like it's connected to all of mm. these things. And it's got your art, even if you are making pretty pictures. There should be a there should be a, a political thesis in there somewhere. It should be linked or to sport, an idea. Yeah, mm. like art. You know, if you don't have an idea, then you don't. It's yeah. not art. It's like decoration in it. You yeah. just which is fine. Like decoration and pretty pictures are fine, but but the, the, you shouldn't. They shouldn't be conflated with meaning. Well, they, not, you know what I mean? art has a purpose in society, and if you pretend it doesn't, and pretend that it is, it's it's like the apolitical. If you're apolitical, you're blah blah blah. Like that applies more to, you know, in inverted commas, creative endeavors than I think it does to anything else. You've got to be aware of what you are doing politically, what you are, and if you're saying nothing politically, then you're you're making propaganda for the status quo, essentially. Exactly, I like. I know. I like. I know. It's a. It's a. It's a. A, a very layperson opinion to to over appreciate the technical aspect of mm. of, of art. You know, you, you can appreciate a talent. You can appreciate a you know craftsmanship, right? But I have done. Uh, where, where I report is is a very artistic society. It's quite. It's quite well off, and as a result of it being well off, it has. Um, you know, like it'll it'll have like a better artistic institution yeah. or a better a yeah. better art scene, all that kind of stuff. And because people have time, you know, when when you when when so when you've got when you're prosperous, you've got time on your hands. You can do mm -hmm. some painting on the weekends, etc., etc., etc. Right. And there's some very technically adept people in who I cover and I talk about and I write about, and that's great. And um, but the most like moving art I've ever seen, which has also actually been quite technically good, it is. The stuff that comes out of the school, right? Yeah. Particularly like like the like this stuff, like a lot of the paintings that like will teenagers will teenagers will do will be like of their friends or like of, of like hanging out at the skate park and stuff like that, yeah. right? And that to me is like that's really precious, right? Yeah. Because it's like it's you're taking something that's really important to you and you're expressing yeah, it. Yeah. And in, in a way, you're kind of preserving it, but you're preserving the feeling of it, not the the snapshot, not the Instagram photograph, mm -hmm. as it were. I don't have a problem with the Instagram fo photograph or whatever as well. That's that's its own thing, which is the da da da. Um, but like, yeah, like I, there's something, there was something really, uh, really like meaningful about people painting pictures of them and their friends, painting, there's a lot of political art there as well, Black Lives Matter stuff, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. And like, stuff like that that you that like someone's been angry about that someone's been someone's been like you know sad yeah. about that because there's something is someone that they miss has gone on to a different mm -hmm. school you know like that stuff you the, the paintings just like they just reek of that kind of emotion and it's amazing we shouldn't have used which, the word which, at, you know grown-up art is kind of ashamed of yeah. right if you're doing anything to exactly. grown-up art is actually very gen x -y. like you got to pretend to be cool and not care about anything right which is which is really sad yeah mm. I, like raw that raw um like making yourself vulnerable being raw and emotional mm. and honest like we need to stop seeing that as embarrassing we really do mm. it's not it's and not think, cool uh, yeah it's not cool to not <laughs> to not have feelings exactly yeah it's um it it it, it yeah and it, like but like it, just, it hits you it hits you like um like a bit of a because because you infer like you not infer but like it 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 reminds you of how you felt as well yeah yeah. Like it's a, it's a, you know like it's it's a, an absolutely emotional connection. It is, and like yeah, some of the the adult stuff I see is very technically adept. But a, you know a lot of a lot of adult artists like making jewellery, and that is you know by its very de definition very decorative, mm, not yeah. expressive. Yeah, I've never been emotionally moved by a piece of jewellery. Now I, I think don't know, it can be it's... if it's incredibly beautiful and blah blah blah, but. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't think I've, like I don't have any, like I don't dislike jewelry, but like <laughs> I know what you're saying. It, I know what you're saying. I do know what you're saying. Yeah, maybe I, maybe I'm I'm under appreciative of the you know like if it's I don't I don't think of us, like a lot of like like lay people again lay people when talking about art I think they'll either say they'll either overvalue the technical side or mm. they'll go oh, it's about expression it's expressive it's about expressing feelings like it can be mm. but it could also be about expressing concepts ideas 
political theses. You know, it doesn't have to be just about evoking a feeling. It can, mm. it, you know, it can say something. It can, it doesn't, and it, you know, it's art. It's not saying it specifically. It's not saying it in a very uh, exact or detailed way. But it, but combining that emotionality with something conceptual, I think, is also very mm. healthy. And and yeah, that that needs to be a thing. But I say, yeah, I think you know, the, the crafts and jewelry, they're obviously incredibly valuable as well. People making beautiful mm. things and sharing them does say something politically. And I'm a little bit sad mm. actually that the. Um, the art community on the Feddy, you know, we were talking last time about how the influx of Twitter people is, is, is you know, it has, will change the culture on Fediverse. Mm-hmm. I've noticed, you know, the Mastodon art, we love, we love Mastodon art. You see some great mm-hmm. stuff there, but like, I feel like before the Twitter influx, it was very much just people making their things and sharing them. Mm-hmm. And after the Twitter influx, just the fee- the feeling has become people making things and selling them. And like they're always selling them. Artists have got to make a living. I'm not. I'm not. You know. You know. It's a, that that romantic idea of the starving artist is. You know. Capital wants that. <laughs> you know? yeah. like, artists shouldn't starve. Well, artists should get paid for what they do. It's not about that. It's it's tonal. Mm. They, they view their mm. art as a commercial endeavor rather than a labor of love for which they get mm. paid. You know. Yeah. I mean, well, it's it's a bit like podcasts, isn't it? It's like. You know, there's a lot of podcasts where they, I'm sure they do it for for a labor of love as well, but they still have a Patreon and a merch store, <laughs> unlike some other podcasts. Yeah, and they're certainly they're certainly less in need of it than us. I would think. You know, it's not about it's not it's not that we're independently wealthy and don't need the money. It's that we don't want to do it for those reasons. Exactly. I think I think once money becomes involved, there's obligation mm-hmm. or pressure that I think both of us actually kind of run from. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can't. St- I feel like it's like a little bit like you've signed a contract. I hate you. You know, like like <laughs> yeah, you know the old cartoon where they've got some yeah. some devil and he'll unroll a really long <laughs> yeah, contract. Yeah. Print. Whenever money's involved, I feel that contract's about to come out. Yeah. Like you know, it's. Uh... I've also. I just also. Hang on. This this is. I'm, I'm, I, I was making a cup of tea. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how much. I used to you used to be able to hear me from over there, but I don't think you can anymore. But I think it's the sound. Um, the gate. Sound cancelling. But there's another. Um, this is again. We're, I, I'm saying a lot of trite things today. This is a trite and, and cliche things mm-hmm. to say. But I just wish people would realise when they've got enough. You know, these hyper mm. successful podcasts. You know, they go like, we don't need any more Patreons. Go, you know, give it to another podcast who needs it a bit more. Mm. Like we, we we've got we, we're living very comfortably now. Thank you very much. Like, yeah. Mm. <sighs> why? Why? I, do- yeah. I I suppose it's a little bit of a case of like. But that boat is so hard to rock, right? If you start saying we've got enough Patreons now, then no one's going to Patreon. <laughs> but that's good. That's there, good. There's, good enough. Well, yeah, you mean they will leave. Same, I think. The thing is, it'd be they interesting. Wouldn't. They wouldn't. To, no, well, could it could, see this might be a thing Patreon could take on is like have a maximum like bracket. So it's be like allow people to <laughs> donate to me, but once I'm making X amount, once I'm making, I don't know, five thousand pounds, they, a need, month to, they need to employ this. Would give okay, because currently Patreon is just rentier capitalism, right? They've created the service and now they're just sitting on it and scraping 30% or whatever they take, right? Whereas it's quite a small percent, it's like five, that's not bad, something. that's not bad, yeah. But if they employed auditors. Who went in and 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 just because it, it's going to depend like what you know these patreons it could be like fifteen people it could be one person so you've got to go in see how much money they're making like on average and then go right mm. yeah you're capped your patreon money goes somewhere else now that would be great I'd love that yeah because uh, that would be great yeah capitalism you know it's very it's you know we, we generally agree it's it's bad at most things at this point but it's mm. really bad at rewarding artistic endeavor even in something mm. like you know the the music industry which is very that's not like you know art art which is capitalism mm. finds it very difficult to deal with recording industry is is you know it kind of works with capitalism because you know you can distribute blah 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 but we've still created a system where you know a handful of people get mega rich and mm. then you know classically trained violinists can't afford to eat despite working in three different orchestras and you know it's Mm. And, and you know, and, and and you know, not just classical musicians, but musicians in general find it very hard to get work. We, we, we've, we've essentially, for creative endeavors, created like a lottery system, where yeah, you know, everybody, millions of people buying a ticket, and one person will get hyper rich, and everybody else will get nothing, and that's mm. 
that's a really bad way to reward, you know, creative endeavor. Like, yeah, it's such mm. a terrible system. Yeah. So far, so far, Bandcamp is still all right. I'm still getting my stuff on. <laughs> still, I assume out. it would still reward if somebody was incredibly popular. It's, it rewards based proportional to popularity, right? Mm. And that's kind of the problem. I mean, of course, that's fair. Well, no, with, ba- with Bandcamp, you you just buy the music. It's, I mean, in reality, Bandcamp is kind of a little bit more yeah, but this, of a donations platform. But what, what I would the, want, ideally, is... Um, I mean, I've not got much experience with Bandcamp, but what I'd want, ideally, is that, say, I go and buy a track on Bandcamp, half of it goes mm. to the artist whose track I'm mm. buying, and the other half gets distributed between everybody on Bandcamp. Oh, that would be kind of cool. Like something along those lines. I mean, a- again, it would be even better if it was, you know, sort of means-based and there was a clever algorithm, you know, making sure that everybody was doing okay. Uh, yeah, but also a little bit, I-, I know this is flawed just as an idea, but efforts-based as well. Like, because obviously you don't want people just showing up. <laughs> just uh, making know. an account. Yeah, I mean, that's, it kind of gets into yeah. UBI territory though, right? Like, of like, but how, you know. Well, this is work. what UBI is all about, right? Yeah. Like, I think, it, you know, it, it recognizes the idea there are some things you can't put a value on, but a worth something mm. just you know you know i mean just think about what the world would be like if if everyone's means were met yeah. and then we worked on from there like yeah. that'd just be like yeah and we've got the resources to it uh, yeah okay something else i've been thinking about is uh did we, did we talk about this last week but um i'm trying to write a th- i'm trying to write a sort of blog post about it you know like s- s- the small internet small computing low-powered computers and stuff Oh, we've never talked about that. This started. I was reading a thread. I mean, we've we've had a long-standing interest in this stuff. You and I, not not mm. not a pronounced interest, but an interest, right? Um, and I was reading this thread uh, on on Feddy uh, of these uh, retro computing people, sort of bemoaning mm-hmm. the fact that uh, people don't run HTTP servers anymore. You know, it's HTTPS only. Which, if you've got a Commodore sixty four, like it, it's it's not powerful enough to do the encryption needed to look at HTTPS. Uh, so they were just sort of imploring people to like leave your HTTP servers running for retro computers, right? Um, which I thought, you know, it's mm-hmm. perfectly valid thing. Which made me made me look into like, is 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 HTTPS really worth it? it? What 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 security does it actually provide? And as far as I can tell, all it really does is, is prevent from man in the middle attacks, which is basically yeah. really only protection against like your ISP doing dodgy stuff or like you're in a cafe, you're on public Wi-Fi. And I kind of think if you're in, if you're on public Wi-Fi, you should really be on a VPN anyway. Hmm. Well, yeah. Um, mm, this is. I mean, I think it. Prov- yeah. Like, I think the general cons- Like, I've heard. I've heard few. You know, various iterations of this debate. I think part of it is shopping websites need HTTPS, right? Yeah. That's a, yeah. That's a requ- That's that's an understandable requirement. But, for example take Gemini, does Gemini really need HTTPS? Now, one of the original tenets of, of Gemini was uh, some degree of pri- uh, was, was uh, privacy, I think. Well, um, it does, again, it, prove- it, pr- it protects you against man in the middle, and it protects you, it, I think mm-hmm. it protects you to an extent, uh, to your ISP, I get, first of all, like, injecting content, but also, like, reading what you're reading. Yeah, it takes user privacy very seriously. That's the yeah. word Gemini. Yeah. Uh, so not, like... Uh, but like, when but, but I Gemini, set up, I, 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 tell me if this is if you yeah if you want to make a point. But um, Gemini, it's kind of almost perfect for retro computers. It's like it's a modern protocol that's you know webish in terms of you know it's people making content, um, but they can't access it because of the, the TLS, and that's that's sad. And also, like as me as someone who is like an incredibly novice system admin, right? Mm. Like very very very. The thing that trips me up most of the time is HTTPS and the certificates. Yeah. And I've seen even actually quite good system admins just forget yeah. to get a new certificate and shit like this. And it's like, um, that shouldn't, um, that, I don't know, the, the fact that that is just a constant, like, thorn, you know, in the side. I think what it is, it's things not... Things running smoothly does... Mm. It's, it's a technicality that we don't, we don't really, like, do you really understand what TLS does? I mean, on a high Not, level, we both do, right? It, it, we, we know what its function is, but we don't mm. really... I, I, think, I think it's fair to say you and I, don't, we don't really understand it. So it's this chore that we have to do that we don't really understand, mm. and that's never... Fun. Like, we're doing a fun thing, and it's like, oh, God, I've got to do the TLS certificates. Yeah. You know what it is? And, and, uh, yeah. And also, like, there's a thing of, like, 
it's one of those things where everyone kind of has to do it in mm. order for it to have the most effect. If you're only encrypting important stuff, then you've 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 or, got a bit of a signal. Uh, yeah. What the yeah, only but encrypting that, stuff that, that people could get people in trouble. Yeah, like that. It 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 it, it accentuates the if you've got nothing to hide, you've got nothing to fear. Yeah, 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 feeling yeah. a little a little bit more, but yeah. that notwithstanding, if gem like what does Gemini need? HTTPS. Does it need that extra step? Well, there is actually that because Gemini came up in that thread that I was talking about, um, and, and they were, you know, they were saying we we get why they did it, but it's sad that we can't look at Gemini on our Commodore sixty fours because that would be kind of great, right? And it would be kind of great. Um, mm. And I, yeah, I'm, I'm really, I'm really, um, I'm, I don't, I don't know which way to fall on this one, whether whether Gemini should or should not have TLS, but there is a protocol. I think it's called Spartan, which is literally just Gemini without the TLS, which. It came. It, I think it came too late, and the fact that it's a different, entire different protocol is a little bit sad. But I, I, I do is amazing. If I had to like, if I could go back in time and make Gemini not have TLS, I think I would just. I'm, I'm close. I'm fifty fifty, but I think I would just about choose to do it. I think it. I think it would be more fun if it didn't have TLS. I think it would be more fun. I think you do more interesting things with it. However, I would also I like I don't know the advanced bits of Gemini very well. I don't know, for example, forum posting, um, and and few, and things like that. I don't know how they work and whether or not HTTPS would is is like required for them in terms of from an authentic authentication. Are doing what? Standpoint. Sorry, you got to stop saying HTTPS because that's HTTP. Gemini's not the, HTTP. This is yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry. Not, yeah. yeah, just to be clear. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I don't know with the forum stuff on Gemini mm -hmm. whether or not if you got rid of HTTPS. Oh, you wouldn't know whether this post was really from the person who sent it, and exactly, yeah. And also, does that matter? Does that matter? Like, I don't know. I mean, again, that is what well, the problem. There would be a man in, man in the middle attack, right? Is, that, is it sexist? If saying, you're just talking about person in the middle. If you just yeah, if if you're just talking about a forum like post. fishing, <laughs> yeah, this is where I kind of come down because when I was looking into it, is HTTPS worth it? Um, there was there was kind of a there was a, a big deal post on Hacker News of somebody and somebody made a video and they challenged somebody. They said. Uh, have you, if you've got an HTTP site, even if it's just a static site that you think it doesn't matter, like g give me the URL and I'll hack it. And this dude is like, I'll, I will, ha I will show you why HTTP is a bad idea. I will hack your site. And he made this mm. thirty-minute-long video of like, I don't, I can't remember, but it was like twenty attacks that I can do against this one site, right? But mm. they were all just predicated on the assumption that he'd got control of the connection. So he was essentially, he was mm. hacking his own browser. He was saying, so if somebody man in the middle, they could do this. And it was all just injecting mm. content and stuff, right? Which gives you a ton mm. of power. You can do some really dodgy stuff with that. But the attack mm. there is really the man in the man in the middle attack is the bit, mm. you know. And yeah, layers of layers of security is what gets you security, sure. But they, mm. they, he wasn't really, he, he hadn't hacked the website. He had hacked an open Wi-Fi network, <laughs> and he hadn't even done that. Yeah. He was just pretending he'd done that. But that's all he'd hacked, is an open Wi-Fi network, right? Mm. But I don't, you see, I don't know where I fall on this. And where we expect, for example, Gemini in particular to be, mm. do we expect Gemini to forever remain a place where like, you might talk about your favourite David Bowie song, or <laughs> your, you know, like, well, maybe I, a little well, bit of a diary? Yeah, this or... is where I go into the low-power stuff, because we're, if we're thinking about... Um, we, we need to move to lower power devices, right? We need to, if we're going to go climate, oh, yeah. blah, 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 one degree, whatever, the ones we've overshot already. But yeah, mm. obviously we want to go to much lower power devices. And um, I'm not sure how much of an overhead, to, I don't know whether it's the, with the retro computers, I assume that it's their, it's their simplicity rather than their, it's like they, it's a lack of computing power, right? But yeah. does, do the modern computers that can do TLS, like does, does, it, does decrypting a TLS certificate or, or whatever the actual mechanism of that is, does that use a lot of power? Does there a power spike in that? Would we be losing less power if, oh. you know, if we all had solar powered? But no, I, I'm, yeah, I'm thinking of that. And I'm also thinking, you know, mm. if, as is probably the case, we do actually fuck everything up and, you know, a few humans survive in this post apocalyptic wasteland, like they're going to have like solar powered, low powered devices for sure. Are they going to go to Gemini or are they going to go to GoFi? <laughs> GoFi is kind of hard, though. 
Well, I, like one of the this, things I, I chose Gemini over Gopher at well, the time was because it was like I, I, I could do it. Is it? I actually ended up reading this discussion and having these because I think we're we're roughly in the same position on this. Like we're not quite sure, right? And no, I'm, like, I'm not it, sure. Yeah, I, I, I was like, it would be nice to have an you know a, a version of my Gemini site that that retro computers could access. So I did end up doing a Gopher version of it, or writing the scripts that churn out. A oh, how hard, hard was that? R- an absolute ball ache, honestly. Yeah, Gophers, I, I Gophers are a real pain compared to Gemini. <laughs> but Gemini's lovely. Gemini is really lovely. The fact that it's marked down and it's so simple, it's just mm. text. But yeah, because Gemini, I mean, Gopher is very much of its time. Did you know that Gopher is actually a younger protocol than the web, though? Very slightly. I think there's months in Maybe, it. Maybe, yeah. But it's, oh, was yeah. it a competing protocol at the time? Yeah. Go, Gopher is actually very slightly younger, which is kind of, I've always thought of it as an older one that the web replaced, which I think is true. I think Gopher gained popularity and then the web kind of took over from it. Um, but anyway, yeah, I set up, I set, I've set up this Gopher server. So now <laughs> like, I never, I do all these things in lieu of actually writing any content on my site. But now if you've got a Commodore 64, you could. <laughs> You can go and look at, you can go and look at my Gopher site. Yeah, and I like yeah. that. I, I'm happy I've done it. I'm happy to have it. I'm going to write a thing on the site about it. But I'm happy that I've got a Gopher. I think I think it's important to. I don't know why I think it's important, but I think it's important to like uh, you know keep access for retro stuff and 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 keep an eye towards like low power consumption, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean that makes sense. You know, you you want to like. Uh, for for like ac- like academic purposes, re- like knowledge purposes, like preser- you're preserving knowledge, yeah. basically, really, you know. And I'm just thinking, um, like, like you know, if, if the shit hit the fan and I survived, and I'm living in this post-apocalyptic wasteland, and I've got like a Raspberry Pi and 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 a portable TV, and I'm cobbling together like a computing system for myself, what protocol do I want to use? And it's probably, I mean, it's not going to be the web for sure, right? Or and let, well, could it be a much more just basic version of the web? What, well, I would like want it. I would want it. I wouldn't want. I mean, have you ever tried to run a graphical desktop on a Raspberry Pi? I mean, first of all, no. so much more power consumption, and it, you know it's laggy and slow, and you can do it, but it's laggy and slow. Like I would much rather be in a terminal and have just like pure text space because that's going to use the least power, mm. and you know, well, that really power to weight really isn't it? Yeah, mm. and that's going to be a, that's going to be. A, you know, if we live in that post-apocalypse, I really struggle with that word. Um, <laughs> we're going to be less concerned. Hello world. <laughs> we're going to be less concerned with like flashy CSS animations, I think, and more concerned with I, the text. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I think so. I I tend to flip flop on this idea a little bit because whilst many, you know, like a good number of people uh, would find that to be like an absolute distilled. Uh, way of taking in information, right? So they've recently updated the CMS for the website at work, and it is so mobile orientated and shit that it's kind of really gotten under our skin, right? Yeah. Because it makes looking at the things that you're supposed to look at just worse, like a worse, a objectively worse, worse experience. They've taken out the scroll bars, so you don't even know <laughs> which parts of a page you can actually scroll down on. <laughs> I like, feel like that's very this... much like not having Windows. It kind of. You don't know where in the oh, document you are. It's yeah, like it's, you, you, it, you, yeah, it is. So it, it is, and everyone agrees it's worse. Everyone knows it's it's worse. On the terminal, you've got you've got like there's a known. You just you just write what you want. To, you write down the information you portray, and you put in the links. Like it's it it distills it to its most essential part. You don't even have to worry about line width or anything like that. You don't have to worry about what device is going to be viewing mm-hmm. your Gemini website or your your, your tech stuff. Um, but also, and I, I speak a little bit personally in this one, is graphs and charts are kind of interesting for, for like learning about stuff. You know, like it's, it's, it's the process that which you use to take on board information. Some people are more visually inclined, right? And that is unideal on a terminal, but not always. Like you've got, um, is it N cursors where you, yeah. you've got like, a, like a, and stuff like that. So that's not, you know, but it is quite limiting in that regard. But I, you don't need, high power to do that i just think you might you can't do anything other than you, just something that i think you could probably do in a terminal to be honest but but it's something a bit more visual does that make sense yeah yeah no absolutely just, yeah, yeah like high charts or shit i don't know 
I've been, I've been, I, I was trying, I was trying, <laughs> I opened my site up in Gopher and I've been trying to get like the focus window, but I literally cannot find the window. So the viewers have had a tour of my desktop of every window that's running and none of them were the right window. Well, you got your, um, so you're, you're, you're back up with the, is it the free tier of, um, that hosting? Oracle. Yeah. The free Oracle, free Oracle. Yeah. But you say it's a bit of a bollock to set up, right? It's, yeah, it's very Oracle-y. <laughs> um, it's very complicated compared i'm used to digital ocean which is very straightforward you click on click mm-hmm. on a few buttons and you got a virtual machine this one setting up the virtual machine was fine ssh in, in, into it was fine but they they set up a, by default a firewall on the machine and also a mm-hmm. firewall on like the um management web interface and you have mm-hmm. to forward ports on both oh. and i don't understand why that I, th- I think one's supposed to feed through into the other but it doesn't seem to work that way. So I just I, I did it on both, and that worked. And I'm like, right, I'm not, you know, it's networking. If it works, mm. don't don't touch it. Um, yeah, yeah. So, but event, yeah, I got it. I got it working. So, yeah, if anybody's struggling with it, just for and this is what the person who reminded me that Oracle free tour was. I think they said the mm. same thing. Um, but yeah, it work, works great. It's free. It, it's it's. I think it's a little bit better spec than the, the cheapest DigitalOcean one, which I think I mentioned. That's before. remarkable. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. I'm not plugging for oracle of course but you know if you want a free vps it's all it's doing is costing them money go do it mm. yeah and I, but, uh, do you feel that's still overpowered yeah given given that i could run i mean my website you know i don't track any data but i assume that gets about two visitors a month so i could run that on you know literally <laughs> anything. it feels like there's like I reckon if Gemini not took off, but like was maybe as popular as the Fediverse at the beginning of 2022, right? Where there was like a solid community mm. around it, but not, but not, not nothing viral or, or anything like that. There'd be some great opportunities for shared hosting on Gemini, right? Because it would just be like, it's, it, you take the, you take the pictures away. You take the multimedia yeah. away. Yeah. You have just got, it, it is so, so it would probably cost peanuts uh, for, yeah. yeah anyone with any amount of money to host yeah. countless Gemini projects. I mean, really. just the fa- I think just the fact that the, the pictures and the, I don't think storage is the main cost. I get what you're saying, like pictures and video. I mean, you can put pictures and videos on, on Gemini. You just download them to view them. Right. Mm, but, yeah, yeah. Cause yeah, that, that makes, you know, and I that think, makes a sense. That's a sensible way of doing it. I think the thing that the thing that made web hosting expensive was when sites went dynamic, like back in the day when it was just static HTML. I mean, it wasn't, it was CGI and stuff, but you know, static HTML was far more common. The hosting requirements were much lower. You didn't need a database. You didn't mm. need the CPU to make use of the database. I mean, I do think for blogs and stuff, this is this is a well trodden path. But for blogs and stuff, for yeah. personal blogs, it being dynamic is absolutely insane. You know, if if yeah. you if you make a post once a week, why does every viewer need to regenerate? I mean, why does every mm. viewer request need to make the server regenerate that page dynamically from a database? What's madness. I mean, that, that's madness. There's a lot of and caching fair, that goes on. It's not, you know, it does cache a lot. But like that, that idea, the fact that blogs are, are by default dynamic is mad. But like, like, let's be honest, I find it a bit mad that it's all done. I think WordPress puts all of its content in databases and it yeah, doesn't yeah. do files. Yeah. That to me, like, I know, it's a, <laughs> I know this is a very Unix like <coughs> thing. Or is it no? Or, yeah, yeah, Unix. Everything's a file, right? Yeah, yeah. That, but like, but like, let's be honest. A blog is a collection of TXT files with maybe some pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Like, I, I, way, way, way back in the day when I was learning PHP in the somewhere in the early two thousands, um, I made a when I, I was still scared of databases at that point, but I made a text file based web forum, <laughs> which, <laughs> which is, and like. I think I think it is. We, we, we've got so good at making databases that the database would be faster. But mm. you know, if you're making a forum for a couple hundred people, text files would work fine, right? They, you, they're yeah, not but, as manipulable. You can do clever things with databases, but it's like, but those are things that you know, big corporations. They're not things that we need. Mm. Yeah, I, the thing is, of course, and I think another thing, the thing I like about Gemini, which I do quite like, you know, is that like try and inject some adverts into it right <laughs> you know it's it's, uh, it's just like it's you, a capitalism like i mean i don't know i you know like i remember very little about the beginnings of the web in fact 
yeah, basically, I was I was like two years old when it when it was even WWW was invented, but um, but like I've lost my thread. I've lost my thread. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> well, I was going to oh, say, yeah, no, yeah, no, I got it right. Yeah. Right, got it back. Sorry, this this the LCBD, right? Um, <laughs> the the it is like is did is the reason. The sin, you know, the WWW took off. Is it because it was basically easier to exploit by capitalists? Because like Gopher, yeah, I think, I think, I think probably but, that, yeah, I think, that, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if that was at least a significant component of it, yeah. And I do like mm-hmm. that a lot of the discourse on Fediverse when, when they're talking about new technologies and things like you know Gemini and whatever small small tech and stuff like that is the discourse is informed by a politics of like this stuff needs to be yeah, resistant to capitalism we'd, we'd all agree on but like you know it need, the, the technology from the start has to be like anti-racist anti-colonial these things need to be taken into consideration and it, it's mm. it's so nice to see such a politically informed and engaged approach to technology i think it's something that mm. the untech the untechy left really lacks i mentioned didn't i the um you did this was a topic owen I write this uh, down in my topic is it, is owen jones right yeah, I think. Do we have different opinions on Owen Jones? I think a little bit. I think he is legit. I don't like Owen Jones. I, d- I, d- I think he's. I think he's got a problem. He's one of those people that's just a bit irritating, and I think that's a shame because I think. I think his politics is largely in the right place, right? I don't think he's. Uh, uh, I think the words he says is in the right place. Right? Like <laughs> I think he, says, he means he says it. That- I think he means. It. I think he just comes across like he doesn't. Is the problem. He is such a okay. So for people who don't know Owen Jones, because he's a bit of a UK only celebrity, he is a left wing political commentator who famously wrote the book Chavs. Yeah, <laughs> he's been on Question Time a few times. Yeah. He, but and this is maybe the bit where he comes across not necessarily comes across, but he behaves like a very lefty Twitter bully. You know, like he <laughs> so has he done. Comes and, across as how old are you, roughly? Uh, I'm thirty four. Okay, do you remember like? How old you? How old were you in the nineties then? Uh, I, well, I was was born in eighty eight, so between two and twelve. Okay, so you probably do remember some like like cool educational videos from the nineties with like young I, presenters yeah. going like politics. It's not boring. It's for you. Here's why politics is cool. Like he's got that kind yeah. of feel to him for me, which is that's what I find a little bit off putting. Oh, okay. That's interesting. No, yeah, I just find him a little bit. He's a bit like he comes across. And he might not be. He comes across as a bit always online, a bit of a Twitter warrior. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, yeah, and that that links into what what I'm gonna say because he made a video about the whole Twitter fiasco, whatever you want to call it, and um, he mentioned he mentioned Mastodon and like you know the idea of people going to Mastodon in this kind of like like laughing, sneering, contemptuous kind of way. So, yeah, Mast- mm. Mast- I don't think Mastodon is the solution. Like, you know, rolling his eyes kind of thing. I'm reading a lot in here. Uh, he d- he does have a Mastodon account with like at that time like one post on it. Like, you know, he's, he's clearly not engaged with. Like, I don't know. I don't know how how unkind to be to people like this. But he's very much of the. What what pisses me off about this is he's very much of the left, and Fediverse is something that is inherently of the left. And even if it weren't, you know, politically, even if like a lot of the people involved in it weren't there politically, it is a grassroots thing made collectively. It is it is almost like a yeah. living embodiment of like socialistic communal ideas. Um, I would say maybe like um, anarcho-socialist kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, because yeah, it's yeah. it's certainly it's certainly like like I mean, there's there are controversial opinions even about like Eugen. Right. Yeah, yeah, because for sure. Yeah, yeah. He's often seen as too much of a figurehead, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it, there is this natural clawing yeah. down. Of and I'm sim- I'm sympathetic to that view for sure. Uh, it's it's a yeah, like but anyway, that's, that's beside yeah. the point. But my point is that like for people of the left, even if you're not techie, if you're mm. of the left and you see something that a community has come together, it's mutual aid, right? It's te- it's mutual mm. aid for tech stuff. 
It's the people who can code coding for the people who can't code and providing a thing that they can use on equal terms mm. as opposed to a corporation providing it from, for you. And people mm. who are of the left, you know, media people who are of the left, they should see value in that. Like if you showed them a physical mutual aid thing, you know, like if, you know, a group who are doing mutual aid and helping to feed people and grow crops, yeah. well, they'd love it. They yeah. get it and they'd love it. But when, they, when they're confronted with tech things that have that quality, they don't get it. They don't see that that is what they're arguing for and i don't get why they don't see it's the same um i really enjoy I yeah i really enjoy so navara you're... media's content i think they make amazing content but like they, they're so in the twitter sphere they're so in you know google facebook they're, they're, they're so in that world and they can't see you know i, I don't get why they you can't see it. the nail on the head there right what you've basically outlined is what happens when capitalism uh, maintains the public square, mm. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even your left, even your opposition <laughs> becomes molded to the character yeah. of the environment. And and you are seeing that uh, Navarro Media and Owen Jones, and there are other lefties out there as well, who other lefties are available, who are um, who are thinking through the lens of capitalism when they themselves probably really don't either, and they don't even know they're doing it, but it's because they've been talking in a capitalist moderated environment for so mm. long. Mm. They have they have molded themselves. They have adopted the language of their opposition. They have but adopted with, the, the, the style. Navarra Media as an organisation, I think. I think they're basically a cooperative, something along those lines. They def- definitely have like pay equity. They're funded through Patreon. Um, they are very much. They're very much an attempt to create like a significant left media organisation that is structurally mm-hmm. left as well as left in terms of its output, and that's noble yeah. and abnormal and they've done an amazing job of it actually the stuff they make is 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 important i think honestly mm. um but the fact yeah just the fact that they don't see that like and you know what they've constructed there is very similar to what the fediverse is the fediverse is a very similar mm. let's make it ourselves let's make it not corporate let's have a different mm. narrative like it's the same thing and they don't recognize that echo i don't get mm. why they don't recognize it as something that they should be interested in well, let's assume that the because I believe they use Max in Navarro Media. Mm. Right? Um, the thing about Max is they sell them as reliable workhorses for mm. the most part, especially in, when they're sold in the corporate world. It's like get a MacBook; they're made of strong substance. Their their battery lasts for a while. Pr- you know, you've got support over the big main apps you can use. It's on rails, but it's it's robust. And I think that it could be the case that. When you're developing left-wing organizations, um, you might very well see um, you might very well see adopting di- the importance of your message getting adopting lefty technology technological principles or attempt or, or grassroots principles. Uh, might be seen as a as a hurdle to getting their wider message out, which is more important because of yeah uh, no uh, yeah I do yeah, think it's it, like to that. that but they could well, I got to take me ages to get around to that point, no I get like, no I get you yeah, absolutely yeah and I think in terms of the you know I think like a hardcore Linux person would be like why do you do your your, your video production on Macs like I'll come in and set up Linux it would be a pain. the transition would be a pain mm. and maintaining that would be a pain like that is easier on Apple like, I'll give them that right. But mm. they could be they could be on Mastodon so easily, and they'd have such yes, a re- yeah, there's no excuse such a Mastodon, receptive but... audience there. Yeah, and, 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 and it is that, the, that, uh, that Owen Jones kind of that sneering, laughing at it like Mastodon. I don't think that's going to replace anything, you know. I've had a look. It's, and it's well, like, see, to me, that's a that's a that's a that's a smell of liberals. That is, do you know what it, I mean? It, it, yeah, it, at least in their in their appreciation of the media landscape. Yeah. And I mean, and, and part, part of it, part of it is. They they they're in the political journalistic sphere, right? And that sphere, more than any other sphere, I think, is is Twitter. Twitter is where they live. Um, political journalists, you know. I mean, I have said before, what's what's her face on the BBC? What's the political Kusenberg? Kusenberg, yeah, she she is literally just a Twitter correspondent at this point. Like, mm. it's just this person said on Twitter, this person said on Twitter. You know, she's DMing people on Twitter. That's that's where she gets her information mm. now, and that's terrifying but also that's you know that's that's their conception of the the political world exists on twitter on twitter mm. See, this is this is interesting because a lot of people talk like i uh, this is one of those things where i'm kind of like i haven't made my mind up on, on all of this at the moment or haven't like fully consolidated this thought 
But like, I feel that Twitter is like at this point it is a fringe of the internet, like like your Tumblers and your Reddits, right? It's not this, but like it has managed to perceive to have this perception of importance because whilst it, the Twitter's yeah. usage is very very small compared to Facebook, I think it's is it yeah, smaller than Instagram. I, um... and all that. I think that's really important. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. I think, I think Twitter, it's, it's Twitter that gives it its perceived importance, not the fact that like yeah. Barry from the is probably not on Twitter. Like I think, I, it's I think very Twitter, rare. Twitter imagines that it's Facebook when in reality it's 4chan. Yeah, pretty much. It's it's, it's a disconnected like arm mm. of the because yeah. I, I did I mention this before, but um, Musk. This is another Musk tweet tweet from a few weeks ago where he said that. I think he just said baldly that um, people saying that Twitter is dying, but still, most most visits from most visits of websites come from Twitter. He was saying like most people who visit a website are getting there from Twitter. Um, and somebody posted back with the actual stats, <laughs> and it was something yeah. like I think it was ninety odd percent of visits come from Facebook, mm. uh, and Twitter was like I think it was at like seven percent, which is the same as um, Pinterest. Yeah. So in terms of yeah, li- in terms of links out to other sites, in terms of number of visitors to other sites, Twitter is sending as many people there as print Pinterest, which is that tells mm-hmm. you what you need to know. I think. Yeah. I, is, it's is it disconnected. Yeah. It's 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 puffed out its chest in a in a in a very artificial way. I like don't you say think... because because important people are on there, like you know, important... yeah, because important people and basically only important people are on, are, are on there. <laughs> I, think, I think that's part of it. I think that is part of it. Actually, I think Twitter, Twitter seems. I don't think it actually is, but Twitter seems very functional and very useful to people who have a huge following. Like for them, it mm. seems like this works really well for you know politicians, political journalists, and celebrities. They're like, yeah, this, mm. this this works great. And for everybody else, it's a fucking nightmare. It's, it's, you know, it's like, the thing is, the Twitter feels like let's apply capitalism to social spaces as well as business spaces, <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah. like, no, you know, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Okay, the number of friends you've got, like, charted, <laughs> or the number of followers you've got is charted. Like, yeah. it's it, like, metrics. Yeah, let's, metrics. Let's, 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 let's apply metrics to social relationships. Exactly. That's what we've done. It's kind of fucking mad, right? Like, <laughs> yeah it's so but yeah like i because the thing is when i instinctually want to say something right when i have a funny picture i've come across that i want to like po- you know share yeah. some some daft shit like that in reality these days there are two places i go the first is is mastodon because it feels like the pub yeah right? it's yeah. like oh, gary have a look at this mad yeah. shit or whatever you know and i like that i if i want to broadcast something i go to you go to youtube is fine right yeah. like, but like yeah. or yeah, but like with with Twitter, that that kind of and the second place I go tends to be like my phone in terms of like WhatsApp groups, yeah, and, and stuff. Like that. But actual, could actual you, could you, people you know, though. Yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think that's what most people do nowadays. Like most people I know who use their, you know, like the the kind of person that will have their phone in their hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Day, they'll be in WhatsApp groups now. Like WhatsApp, remind, I if think I can just I, that reminds me. This is this is a an engagement. Uh, challenge so my i i had a second land iphone and it is dark it's dead now it's dead dead um i need a replacement and i think i think i want i want a refurbished iphone but i want one that's like well refurbished you know decent battery is all i give a shit about um so i want an old iphone with a good battery what's a good place where's where's a good place to get that and don't don't tell me to android i i I don't. I don't really care. I don't use my phone a great deal. I don't really care, but I. I. I just prefer iOS. You're gonna hate me for that. <laughs> it's just the way well, it is. Leave it, leave it in the peer tube <laughs> yeah. comments. I don't want to hack around with my phone. I don't want to do anything clever with it. I want to use. I want to use WhatsApp. I want to use FaceTime, and I want to use TikTok. <laughs> that's, mm. that's it, right? And Face, I, FaceTime's I've actually great. Become, I've recently become introduced to the iPhone because they've had. They've there, there are work company phones now. So I've been learning about them, and I may do a review or a chat about them in a video at some cool. point because it's kind of interesting. As a lifelong Android user, and I quite like Android. Yeah, I have used iOS, and it's like I, I I'm actually kind of understanding why iOS. Oh, really? Has a loyalty crowd? Yes. Yeah. I don't like. I'm not of that mind, but it's like, um, 
they 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 are like quality device. You can't the thing the thing is with me, right? I like F, the F Droid store, right? Like I like the weird apps. Yeah, that yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind of stuff. I I live for that. Right. I've got on my phone now, right? I've got F Droid store on my um my my cheap Android, right? F Droid has some great apps that you can't get anywhere else. <laughs> or maybe you can get anywhere else, but the fact that they're cataloged in the F Droid yeah, store. Yeah. I can and I've got, for example, I've got Fritter. Fritter is a nice mobile app that allows you to follow Twitter accounts, but not on Twitter. So it just scrapes the feed, <laughs> and then you can. So, so my Twitter is great because it's just like I don't have to put my account in or have the account on my phone or anything like that. But it allows me to look at the funny memes account and mm. stuff like that, right? So, and, and it's actually got a better UI because you can group like lists are easier to manage and all that kind of stuff. But it's all done client side right so it's yeah. kind of a third party client but really yeah. it's an rss client that doesn't use rss i think it scrapes straight down from twitter it's knitter in a in a in an app i right? think i think if i went I, out into the world like if i was a person who went out into the world and used my phone how you know most people use their phones i'd probably want stuff like that but there's cro- crosswords which is a scrabble spin-off i love like <laughs> i love that and because i used to love the scrabble go app and then they just kept more and more ads more and more notifications were the worst i literally got a okay notification saying did you know that scrabble was invented in da, 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 da. that's not a note you, that you're abusing the notifications that it was not on uh i've got new pipe um oh yeah i did that thing the other day i really shouldn't have oh, i really regret it now where i was like uh oh damn my new pipe uh isn't working i wish youtube didn't fuck around with their uh yeah you know api and stuff like that it turns out i just did, i needed to up, up, update new pipe <laughs> it's like i hate i should i hate myself when i tweet about shit like that because i know <laughs> it's i know it's really my fault really, <laughs> i had a similar thing just, with um i've got a script that um that uh i, I type I, I got a script command line i type in the name of a film and it streams it for me from a torrent right uh mm-hmm. but it uses the popcorn database which which oh. is which uses um imdb ids so i need to get the imdb id of the whatever f- film i'm looking for before i can get the torrent mm-hmm. uh, so i just scrape i try to use imdb's api and it's an absolute pain in the ass or they don't have one i can't remember but so i just mm-hmm. scrape it from the website right uh, and it just mm-hmm. it stopped working the other day and i was like oh they've changed their html format again i need to because it's just grepping through mm-hmm. the code looking uh no it turns out <laughs> they're actually blocking uh curl Wow. Yeah. So, which is fine because you can just you can send a header with curl. You can send a user agent header with curl. So I just had to add add into my script to you know Mozilla user agent header, and it started working again. <laughs> I was like, yeah, okay, you're actually that is that's that's cat and mouse. That one is. Yeah. Um, actually, this this does actually prompt me. I I, I was going to I uh, I th- I can't remember how much I raised with you about it, but I do have. Um something that I did want to say a little bit about it because I've been such a big advocate before, for it before. Sorry, I'm blurring a little bit. Um, I'll be alright in a minute. <laughs> there we go. Oh, whatever. <laughs> um, I know it's happening, but... Uh, <laughs> right, uh, so anyway, what I, I have um, uh, ceased my news blur subscription. Mm-hmm. And I've been a massive advocate for news blur, and I still am, actually. Like News blur is, and I assume will continue to be the best online uh, RSS reader mm-hmm. um, that I've ever used. Um, partly because you just pay like a dollar a month or a pound a month or something like that. You pay you pay your dues, and it just gives you the service that you pay for. Like, is no nonsense. I, th- I, you, I th- it is open source, so you can get the client for it on the F Droid Store or on the Play or I think iOS as well. But I'm not a hundred percent certain. And um, and it was always really good, but you know, times are tight, and I'm trying to get minimize the number of uh, monthly outgoings that I'm spending. And I know that news blur, like uh, uh, you know, a pound a month is not the difference between uh, much for for me. Like it's not going to be the difference between heating or eating, right? Yeah, if I yeah. really wanted news blur, I could stretch to a, a pound a, a but month. But it's it's about it's about cutting away the the things you don't need, right? We're all. I do not. I do not view RSS. I know you're not the biggest RSS fan, but no. I do not view RSS as much as I used to. But also, I kind of was a little bit like I felt it a bit 
not great that I was using it for both work and for for home. Mm. It was the one news blur account. I had different like categories, so different folders for it. But it was like, um, but there would be some things for RSS that I would like to have notifications on, and RSS works works great yeah. uh, for me for for work. Um, but at home as well, like. I, I I want different things and I want a different pace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, for example, uh, yeah, and I also I'm a big firm believer of the work home separation, right? Yeah. Like I don't like, I I like that I've got a work phone. I like that I've got a personal phone, and never the twain shall meet. <laughs> um. So yeah, that's that's to me that's that's very important. Um. So I just use local RSS feeds. I use Liferia on my work laptop mm -hmm. uh, which does run debian believe it or not so that's kind of cool and um i use my phone i use uh and excuse the name of this feeder um <laughs> uh i think it's yeah feeder which but but f feeder like there's loads of good mobile yeah, rss yeah, yeah. apps to be honest like you can't i did always wonder they... i mean first of all when you say i'm not a fan of rss like the the a, de a decentralized way to you know share oh, information. Like, yeah, I know the principle. Great. Yeah. I just hated that it was XML, and it, I'm not the kind of person who regularly visits particular sites. I'm more, I'm like omnivorous. I, you know, I, I, I'm more of like I, I'm, I'm like an AI. I just follow links, right? I don't check the right sites. Yeah. There aren't sites that I regularly check, so RSS has never been particularly useful to me. But I never, I did never really, I never really got the point of an online client. Like local clients seem just like in reality. It's just so that I could have it across multiple devices. That right, would be the I same. See. Yeah, yeah. However, so that was really the 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 what I was paying the one pound a month for. When really I actually wanted the opposite. I wanted <laughs> yeah, you different... wanted the separation. I wanted the That's separation. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Machines. In fact, to be honest, you know, like what, like I I view the RSS on the phone because phones are quite good at listing things. You know, yeah. you've got the, the size. Yeah. Is for a list right whereas of course with a with a monitor 16 by 9 that's far too wide for listing you know mm -hmm. so and then if i want to read it on a computer i will i can just um share it in mozilla firefox or something like that really you know like the link moving when you've got a page open on mozilla firing it across to a machine another machine that you're also firefox synced to is really useful yeah so yeah. i it's like I mean I'm sure Apple have a smoother way of doing it, but like <laughs> no, I don't think it is. Actually, like, I think the fire, that Firefox feature is actually yeah, that's is actually really slick. Mm, it's fantastic. I actually um, yeah, no, just I quite like Firefox. just for what it's worth. Just going back to iOS for a second. So before I before I used an iPhone, I was always like I didn't really care about phones, but I was like yeah, Android Android slightly better because you know it's a bit more open. You know whether whether it's all that open is arguable, but. It's a bit more open. It's Linuxy, you know. It's hackable. Like, yeah, get get an Android, don't get an iPhone. Uh, having used both, I just think iOS. It just seems smoother, and it does what I expect more often. Like, I, and Android does seem yeah. a bit naggy. I can bit, see that a bit finicky. Yeah. Whereas iOS, you know, I press my finger on the thing, the thing does the thing. I do this, and it goes away. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's, I, yeah. I mean, for me, it's not a fair comparison because an I how much is an iPhone nowadays? Over a thousand pounds, right? Oh, they're so goddamn expensive. Yeah, I, when, when I say I want a refurbished one, I'm I'm talking about like probably iPhone eight at the most recent. <laughs> so mm. that is old. Like I don't want anything remotely new. I think my work phone is like um, I like an iPhone eight. Do you know what? Like that, that era. So currently, I'm on an iPhone seven, which is many oh. years old, right? And for for what I use, I don't play games on it. But um, for you know, Facebook, not Facebook, sorry, WhatsApp, FaceTime, you know, uh, uh, Discord now and then, like it works great. Like it, you know, it can handle yeah. video perfect. Like what, why, what? I don't really get what the new phones offer. I think even if I were loaded, just out of like environmental concerns, I think I would still go with a refurb, like an old refurb, because mm. it works oh, it perfectly. Is, yeah, I mean, I. Or, of course, you like. I mean, do they last? I mean, I because I heard that Apple went through a, um, like a there was a court ruling saying that you're not supposed to slow down the process to save the battery or something. Or that was yeah, they were, they were doing dodgy. Stuff. I'm sure Android does as well. But um, oh, yeah. I I I'm just trying to find out. Okay, so 2016. This phone is from 2016 ish. That's when they were announced. Yeah, 2016. Right. So that's six years old. Is that right? uh, yeah, 
Yeah, so it's a six-year-old phone. It still gets updates. Like, it still gets updated to the latest version of iOS. So, I mean, I don't even really care about that as long as it carries on working. But, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, fine. providing the money is, you know, like, you know, providing you can square it with the money and providing you don't need any obscure apps, mm. uh, I, iOS is is, is, is kind of easy. I do think the pe- the Linuxy people who argue strongly for Android are kind of, I think, tricking, kidding themselves a little bit. Like, it is... And, and it is certainly... Google are way more interested in spying on you than I than uh, Apple. I'm not def- I'm not going to argue for Apple generally, but in this particular case, I, I, uh, yeah. But if you if you're using a phone, uh, either phone at this problem, uh, a point yeah. you've you've you're you're not using like if you've got a GPS and a microphone and a video camera yeah. that you're taking around. In if you're your, using in a, if you're using a Google, you know, uh, if you're de googling it and doing all going to all that extreme then fair enough like fair point but if you're using mm. you know a, a googled android phone and kid, kidding yourself that that is any in any way like free software-y nah. um f droid's cool like f droid's great uh and mm. when you get right down to it uh ios runs a unix kernel a real unix kernel not a pretend a unix kernel. Unix. <laughs> i mean to me the difference is only in that f droid the, the ability yeah. to install yeah. A, that's that's really it because yeah. you know again yeah like you're fooling yourself into thinking that it's anything that, that's the only thing that makes Android slightly freer than iOS in in, in side load. yeah you can sideload I'm I'm actually surprised that like particularly in the EU that courts haven't forced Apple to allow side wasn't there wasn't that happening wasn't that a thing I suspect this I think I think there might be something in the pipeline yeah but uh, the EU are going after Apple quite a lot in <laughs> yeah, general because right, no. like they have like proprietary phone chargers yeah no they they're, they're like, awful yeah so it's it's like but but you know I mean th- this is an example of like good EU you know EU yeah. doing good yeah right? like they they're pulling Apple into line like in terms of in- I would I got to admit I you know, I'd love to work for the the in, uh, European Union's um, bullying inter- operational department. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, bullying like, these big companies to do the right thing would be that would be yeah a satisfying yeah. job. That'd be dream job, you know. Yeah, what's happening with so that old... why 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 have Google not been done for um, antitrust with their browser yet? They have been done. No, and but will done, continue done to be anti done effectively. The trouble is, well. This is interesting because the European Union have have levied more fines at the likes of Google and Microsoft for antitrust than any other institution yeah. in the world. But I so don't know. The thing like, is, the they, thing they, is that with, with the um, with the Microsoft uh, Internet Internet Explorer antitrust thing back in the day, I think the thing mm-hmm. that made a difference there was forcing them to offer a choice of browsers, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and you can't. Really, how do you do something like that with Google? Uh, well, they usually do things like um, uh, actually being able to put, install your own operating system on something is a criteria for considering an open device. That's why in the olden days when the Xbox One came out, it came out as a PC. It was, it was <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. for tax purposes because yeah. I think the, the taxes on PCs were different to the taxes on yeah, games consoles. Like one's a utility, one's a uh, <laughs> recreational mm. toy, right? So... Uh, to prove, as part of the, the the proving of the Xbox original Xbox, they installed Linux on it to be like, look, see, it is yeah, a PC. You yeah. can install Linux. Now, I think that was changed even in the earlier iterations of the original Xbox. And I think in the end, someone somewhere said, "Or oh, you, you're having a laugh. You're obviously a games console." <laughs> Wasn't that the PlayStation? Actually, I remember one of the Playstations. Like they almost made it a selling point that you can install Linux on it, and there were Linux distros. I remember that being a thing at some point. For it. I thought that was like the PlayStation Three or something. Yeah, was that two separate things? I think that was two separate yeah, things. Right. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, no, I've seen I've seen Linux on the PlayStation. I suppose the thing is now, of course, is why. You know, like, <laughs> what would you do with it? Yeah, what would you do with it, right? Like, especially like, well, ThinkPads, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I, and I like that, like, Lenovo um, officially support uh, ThinkPads having Linux on them. Mm. That's a nice. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure how much it matters ultimately. Like, uh, you know, it's validation though, and I think it's validation it's val- that does yeah, kind of matter. Nice. It is nice. It practically, I'm not sure how much it's worth, but it is. It, yeah, I do. I, 
if 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 we dial down the cynicism a little bit, I really like this idea, right? Yeah. Because yeah. the thing is, System76, for example, you know, like great great Linux based company, but like it's not going to be more than it is, right? Mm. Like, yeah, it's not. And, and I, I I worry, and I don't think it's going to have an impact on mainstream policy on uh, on software in general. Yeah. Maybe it might do, and maybe I'm wrong, and, and that would be great. But it doesn't seem like it's going to pressure companies into being more open. No, but I think the, the pressure from Lenovo probably came from within. They were yeah. probably very like educated and well minded. Yeah, um, yeah professionals of that company and they convince management look we'll secure this quarter of the market for life if we i do wonder support. when companies like um ibm align themselves in a more free software way or a more linuxy way i wonder how much of it is how much of it comes from you know a philosophical belief in in in, in that you know even if it's just on the part of particular employees and how much of it is just an attack on microsoft <laughs> but i think probably more the latter honestly maybe and i think that's that's a very strong argument in favor of antitrust legislation and yeah. anti-monopoly I, I just also think like, don't just when corporations do stuff like this they're never doing it a corp a, a privately trade a, a publicly traded corporation is never going to be a good free software citizen in the long it's, term it's never going to be an advocate for anything other in than the, profit right yeah in the long term you essentially you just can't trust them uh, so when yeah. they do good things, yeah, we can we can kind of celebrate that a little bit, but don't 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 translate that celebration into a love for the company. <laughs> exactly, very important to remember. And also, I think as well is like, as long as they're not attacking us, that's <laughs> that's kind thing, of yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I I would set off it just like like I've got a cracking book here. Where did I put it now? Where did I put it now? Oh, here we go. With uh, Rebel Code, Glyn Moody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who I believe is on the Fediverse. So, oh, is he really? Uh, I believe so. I, I'm sure I've seen. I'm sure I follow them. Um, I think, very important that, book, basically. I think you can, get that, you can get that. You can get Rebel Code for free, can't you? I think. I think oh yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I just got the printed book because yeah, I, no, I no, I wasn't. I wasn't like calling you an idiot for paying for it. I'm just. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this idiot. He uses the paper books. <laughs> he paid money. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a good book. It, it talks about like it covers a lot, but it covers basically a lot of why Microsoft are really bad and really underhanded. And it's like, you know what? Can we just can we just not attack each other? <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and we'll be fine, right? Like I, I like that the free, you know, I like the free software projects that embrace the principle of it, where they're where they're they're not hosting on GitHub or anything like that, where they might be hosting on a Gitty instance or a Codeberg or something like that. <laughs> you know, I, I, there was one. I think it's the LibreWolf browser. They have their own flat hub, no, the Flatpak repository. Yeah. So they don't they haven't put it on Flatpak because obviously with browsers, of course. They're a nightmare to like get into distro uh, yeah, repository yeah. browsers. You got you got to compile them. They take forever to compile all that kind of stuff. So having I, I understand how why the likes of Canonical wants to put Firefox in a snap because yeah. it saves so much work, right? Yeah. So I understand that if you're a small browser developer, you're gonna you're gonna see a huge amount of benefit in either app images or flat packs yeah. or snaps or anything like that. But I like that they've gone the free software route with flat packs and had their own flat pack like repository alongside Flathub because that's kind of how you're supposed to do it yeah it's just flat have made it convenient which is also again like that's appreciated you know like because you want to make people you know you want to make these things easy you want to yeah. be inclusive but at the same time the little above and beyond tips that those kind of small free software organizations do they they warm my heart they really do <laughs> yeah like it's like yeah these guys get it you know well, it doesn't warm my heart. Is that, I, don't know, I, was, I was just trying to get to Glenn Moody's website because I think there's a there's a page about Rebel Code on there. But search for Glenn Moody. I get I get his Wikipedia, his Twitter, his LinkedIn, is whatever that is, Instagram, everything but like personal websites. Nobody cares anymore, do they? It's so sad. No. Is he? Is uh, uh, let's is see it? if he's on. Um... Is this it? Maybe. Mm-hmm. Ah, yep, already following. <laughs> on Mastodon Social, though. Mm. <laughs> a bit of fe- 
Uh, I'm sure you've said on the podcast before. What what shifted you off Mastodon Social onto? Was it Mastodon Mastodon IO? Yeah, it was really. I just wanted to be on a smaller instance. Uh, I just sort of won over. Well, I by thought that own. would get to you at some point. Yeah, like I get, but I get then, why you want to go off Linux rocks because it was too old man Linux, right? It's, yeah, yeah. It's, I want, I want a gen- I definitely it, like, I, want, I want a general instance. I want to see a bit of everything, mm-hmm. but I want to. Uh, I wanted a smaller. And I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, I kind of like the big instances. I like. Because you know you see everything, you do see less on smaller instances. Uh, but I did, I think like Mister Dundot Social, it's it's still a very big instance. I still, I feel like I've moved mm. from a very very big instance to a very big instance, and not really, really? Not, it's not really made much to difference. Birmingham, right? Sorry, you've moved from London to Birmingham. <laughs> no, because that makes it sound nicer than it is. <laughs> <laughs> anywhere but London. <laughs> yeah, I did. It, there's not, I, yeah. yeah, I. I I think I eventually came around to a similar way of thinking, which is why I, I hopped over to Toot Dot Wales. Yeah. I and I definitely appreciate it now. Uh it's little things as well. Like you can't always put a, a price on it. I've just scrolled down my feed. I've got someone who's who's been out to pen for a castle and just posted some nice pictures. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I like lovely. That. That's kinda of nice. Yeah. I was I, I was, really I was like gonna that. say another thing another thing I've noticed from the Twitter migration, right, is um before before the Twitter exodus, I don't think I ever saw on somebody's profile uh, my views are not those of my employer. You know that thing that people put on Twitter a lot, yeah. Or views views own or whatever. That always I always roll my eyes at that. I I I, I think it's I think it's one of those things that's used as because you know the face value of it is like. Mm. I am not, you know, my views are my own. I'm not representing my employer, so my employer can't sack me for what I say, and you know, you can't sue me, you can't sue the corporation, and like whatever. I mm. am dubious as to whether it provides that legal protection. There's, no, it doesn't. It's, there's it's, no, it's, it's no fucking it's way that makes bosses feel a bit more comfortable. I, um, may, maybe that. Yeah. I think it's also a thing that people do to make themselves feel important. Like I, the, I'm, I'm a person with opinions, and these opinions are dangerous. Uh, maybe, and... maybe it's a little bit like uh, every now and then. I've, I don't know if it happens anymore. Fa- there'll be like a Facebook thing of if you post this image, I don't consent to Facebook surveilling my account for advertising purposes. <laughs> uh, copy paste, and then that'll go around. You know, and, and all the people. That, yeah. Like I feel it's a little, or like or like when people put no copyright intended in the bottom of YouTube. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I think it's just a bit of a meme at this point <laughs> that you know I do with with, Although, the, with the opinion zone thing though no, I, 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 it's just like it's so like think about it do you really think that fucking matters like I, I, and also the thing I think the sad thing about what that kind of signals to me is uh, Mastodon is now maybe well known enough. That, like, if it's you not, say something really yeah, stupid on I Mastodon, I think it's just a habit for these people who do it. I think it's just a habit. But what that habit, I think it says mm. something really sad about how these people view their lives. Like, their life is almost a property of their corporation, even when they're tweeting on their own personal Twitter account. Oh, that's you know, bad, that's yeah. horrible. Mm. Looking at yourself that way. Yeah. But it's, it's, um, it is a little bit like if you do say something stupid, like especially if you're like a a person of note that they can say on the news or something like that. This person <laughs> says something really stupid on in the same way they do about Twitter or something yeah, like that. Like, yeah, like, like no one's no one says so and so said on obscure social media site <laughs> flippity flop that like <laughs> you know no no one takes like flippity flop like Mastodon is taken seriously just seriously enough that it can be used as a mm. weapon to beat you with. I think that's new. I think that's. I think what did I see? I saw, that, that is new. That feels new. Yeah. I saw some article somewhere. And I don't think it was about a Feddy topic in particular. It was a political thing or something. And they actually they quoted a Mastodon post rather than a Twitter post. And I think that's the first time I kind of seen that in the wild in that kind of context. And I'm like, mm. yeah, Mastodon's things are changing, <laughs> and I'm not sure <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I I the thing is though I do see you know the Fediverse is this like it's it's this living breathing growing pulsing creature right yeah like, that like even if it's as bad as we think it's going to be there there will be the hipster bit the defederate <laughs> yeah, bit yeah. And, like you know I'm sure if I go to certain instances that that have maybe different policies or philosophies or all that kind of stuff. I think you know you're still going to be able to preserve the spirit or the feeling or the vibe, or, or even, we... or even it will become ruined. It will become a corporate 
post-apocalyptic capitalistic nightmare scape and then you know somebody will go okay so we'll take the lessons and we'll you know we'll make the next one <laughs> we'll make the next def- you know this is this is sisyphus sisyphus is yeah yeah this yeah, one, yeah. Was, yeah. Uh, like the, uh, <laughs> but no the, the sadness just comes from like it was my little it was my little sanctuary away from the shitty internet and now the shitty mm. internet has arrived <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, right, it's a little well, bit, Gemini is then. Yeah, yeah. I think, to, to be fair, I was thinking about this the other day. Gemini to me feels actually like a social network. It w- yeah, no, it does. But I do like it, 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 mm. No, you're absolutely right that it does. But so, so did the early web. In the, you know, mm. you had web rings, literally. Mm. You know, friends or interest groups who had web, and you click on next, and you see another another website about what. What, what what did we care about in the early 2000s? <laughs> I don't know. Skateboarding. Skateboarding and Jurassic Park. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, and, and that had that social feeling, and that's what the that's what the social networks capitalized on. They, you know, they 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 packaged that up. They packaged that feeling up. And yeah, no, Gemini very much does have that have that feeling. And I, I think, think I think there are, I think there's a little bit of na- you know like social media natural selection going on here a little bit, right? And I think that. The Fediverse has is is almost bulletproof in this in this survival of the fit kind of thing, because the Fediverse doesn't need to be relevant or popular to survive. It can yeah, just yeah yeah survive yeah with a, in the similar way to how free software in general, right? It, it, if one person, exactly. If yes. one person is using it, it's alive. But no, yeah, I, I, exactly. I I think I what you said earlier about um, Gemini being resistant to capitalism because how do you how would you do an advert on gemini i think i think the lesson there and i think this is a lesson that fedi we could learn something from is and i say this kindly the way to be resistant to that kind of stuff is to be shit you know what i mean like be it be yeah. a thing that most people won't want to use <laughs> be yeah thing. do you know what i mean like I, and I, I don't yeah. I, I don't say shit to insult it i say shit you know you know what i mean yeah, this is a little bit like, and I, I'm going to open up a can of worms, so I'm sorry about this, but we are a few hours in, so maybe people won't be listening at this point, right? <laughs> and and I, I, content warning coming up, I'm, there's a, I'm talking about the slur, slur software, GIMP, the new <laughs> image manipulation program, yeah. right? Um, I don't like that word. I wish they would change the name of it to something that was just a little bit more like, hmm. I mean, at, at the time when they oh. i'm stating the obvious at the time when they chose that word they weren't they weren't intending to be insulting intent no know, they weren't no. matter but yeah go on, sorry. and they're probably not intending to be insulting now no right um but one uh argument in favor of naming your software something like that is that it's not going to get bought out by automatics <laughs> i do this, yeah you know? yeah no that's interesting that, that do, name kind of corporate takeover i do feel that if, if you run a project like that and you've named it something that it, it, it seemed innocuous at the time but somebody's pointed out that like that's actually a bit offensive or that you know it's a bit even if it doesn't cause real world offense even if it you know it can can be construed as having these relations whatever i think mm. you should always just go yep fair enough you know more about this than me i'll change the name that's the, that's the way to go mm. with stuff like that right but Generally, yeah like it's i do miss and this was a feature of early, early kind of hacker culture in general, not just free software. But I do miss the punky kind of rebellious, sticking, yeah. sticking two fingers up at authority. I think you can do that without being without being that kind of offensive. I mean, we want to offend capitalists and fascists. We don't want yeah, to offend. I don't, I don't want to defend any any people who that word would offend, albeit the the type that are in rubber suits or the pejorative yeah. type that I don't. You know, you know like yeah. I don't. Those aren't people I, you know, yeah. care if, to offend. If, yeah, if there are people who, who, I, for whom that word... There are some educators I like as well, so I'm not being too precious about it, but it's just like... But, but, yeah, so I don't know. I feel like that's a bit of a double-edged sword in that way, right? Yeah. Like it's, that brand is worthless to a corporation, but at the same time, it's also hurtful to other people. I, yeah. Those... I, Leave those two things to maybe be equal to be both true. Yeah, yeah, I guess. But but I mean, the point is, you can have one without the other, right? You can be you can make yourself worthless to corporations without offending people that you exactly. hopefully don't want to offend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, make make things that are hostile to 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 profiteering, I guess, yeah, right? Yeah, and I think Gemini does kind of do that, and I think that if but I do, I do, I do, think, us, I do think it's important. I think it's interesting to say it, it does it by being shitty. Maybe we should maybe we should make things a bit shittier. 
Well, maybe, yeah, you know, like, um, oh, well, this podcast. Well, to be fair, yeah. peer tube people actually get, um, they actually get the, the shittier version of this podcast because I put it mm. at 480p on peer tube, but I do put it at the top, uh, or not 480, yeah, 480, 640 by 480 because we do this three, yeah. um, yeah, but no, I love no, somebody, did you notice somebody commented on the last one and said, please, please keep the 43? Yeah. Like, yeah, cool. Oh, for sure, yeah. Like, uh, it, it's all right. I like it. It's good. Actually, it. interestingly enough, um, the guy who crosses Wales in a straight line did all his videos in four three. I like. I, I don't know whether it might be nostalgia. I don't think it is. I just think there's something it's more practical, something nice about it's a squares. much. I like a square. It's 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 a much like it looks better on more devices as well. Mm. I mean, I think square is quite good. I think square is an underrated. I mean, four three isn't quite square, but it, but it's squarish, right? But it's, but it's, it approaches square, right? So you've got the yeah, like it's. But I do, I do. Six, like I'm not anti sixteen nine. You know, you you watch a big wide movie and it's cool. You know, it's a spectacle. It's cool. It's you know, you've got this stuff over mm. here and this stuff over here, and I, you know, it's a sumptuous experience. But then when I when I watch an old TV show that's four three, it feels like it feels like my brain can take a break a little bit. It's like ah. Oh, it's just this. <laughs> I don't have to worry about this anymore. It's just this. How nice. I that'd be interesting actually. The um does the does the difference in like the artificial light actually kind of, you know make I don't know. What what do you mean sorry, the make, artificial light? The, the, so like there's like I would say there's like less artificial light. You 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 oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. bars away. Yeah. I think so it's a bit like when um you know when 60 60 fps movies came out in the cinema. And everybody hated it, and it was just. It turns out, like psychologists say, at least you know I trust these people. Um, it's just overloading your your brain's trying to do a ton of work. Like the blurry mm. fuzziness of like twenty four FPS. Actually, um, that the what's the word? What's the word? The what's the word for not detail? Like kind of blurry. Oh, As low resolution. Vagueness, right? the, vague, like... the vagueness of it allows your brain to do less work like it it, it you, when you when you've got a crisp frame you know 60 crisp frames every second your brain is trying to interpret every single one rather than going oh that's motion it's a blur like well, actually interesting along enough, those lines there's a wonderful video on the uh, internet by h bomber guy who i think we talked about this last week is the reason toots are called toots <laughs> yeah uh, he did a great video uh i gotta remember what it's called now right but it's about basically the merits of VHS and huh. um, because it's trying to find the, kind of sort of, and he uses some examples. I think he puts like what you might imagine is the best possible argument in favor of uh, VHS. I yeah. think, uh, is it the, pa- the power of VHS? Um, what? Uh, uh, do, do, oh, he's done a few videos on VHS. That's kind of interesting, actually. Um, but there's one in particular. Uh, also, oh, the value of director's cuts is actually kind of interesting as well. <laughs> um, but he also he famously did uh, Fallout Three is garbage, and here's why, or something to that, yeah, that effect. Yeah. Um, uh, there's, there's a. Uh, Okay, anyway, basically he does a video. I think it's the power of VHS. Uh, it's a half-hour document, uh, not documentary, half-hour yeah. video, YouTube video, about why uh, the merits of it, right? So it's not, not, not necessarily saying why it's the best medium and everyone should do VHS and all that <laughs> kind of stuff, but it's like this is kind of what it brought to the table and, and all that kind of stuff. Why, why the, here, here are the good bits about it. And there were things like, I think he uses the original Aliens movie where in a clear and crisp digital uh version of it you can see that you can see in the dark a lot more right you've got the range there's you know you know of light a lot more yeah whereas with vhs and the graininess of vhs you've there's mystery yeah 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 so that's the uh i can see yeah i can absolutely see that argument I've been yeah. I mm-hmm. when I'm watching something and I'm engaged in it, the quality really doesn't matter. I've been watching an old TV show with a friend, and their their internet is incredibly shit. So mm-hmm. we're getting the shittiest versions that we can find, which is hour long episodes at 100 megabytes. So they're pretty compressed. Uh, it's mm-hmm. a bit of a smear. You can't really see faces and stuff. Um, <laughs> but like 
and you you notice it for the first five seconds and then and then you know you get wrapped up in the narrative like like we are with you know we're weird monkeys we love stories and as soon as you're interested i don't care i mean i most of my tv watching back in the day was like a 15 inch portable tv and a 14 inch portable tv in my bedroom with a terrible signal in rural staffordshire you know it's fuzzy it was you know you enjoy the thing it doesn't matter i watch everything on a thinkpad you know like (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah. but i'm totally with you on that one it's 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 all you need, right? Like, if the, if the story is not compelling, I'm, I, why on earth would you watch anything if you're not compelled by the story? And I do think, yeah, like the four-three ratio. My mum always used to say, like, watching black and white films is more like relaxing because your brain's doing less work. And I don't know how, you know, really? psychologically whether that's true or not. But I do remember, you know, growing up when I did, color was obviously <laughs> a thing. A black and white movie yeah. would come on TV. You'd be like, oh, black and white movie. Uh, and then you get into it, and like your your brain forgets that it's black and white. Like, yeah, very quickly. It's, that's, yeah, and a bit. A bit I, I will, it's interesting, actually. I know that people use black and white filters on their phones to try and yeah, reduce it doesn't quite, it doesn't quite look the same. It's especially black and white film. It doesn't capture. It doesn't capture light in quite. Uh, no, I I did a story on a independent movie that was being made mm-hmm. uh, in in my coverage area, and they it was set in modern day and it was uh in black and white and it was very clearly <laughs> filmed in color yeah and they put black and white on. yeah now i don't know enough about color to like know why that was uh sometimes it might be well they didn't set up the, the shot for black and white so there's there's not contrast where there needs to be contrast there's not you know, there's there's a whole bunch of like cinema rules that you do when you're filming black and white that mm. don't necessarily apply to color. But also, I it didn't look right. It looked like uh, I we can't afford a. I mean, the the only the only sort of natural way to get one, well, maybe not the only, but the, the, the way black and white was captured was black and white film, right? And black and white film, I mean, it it just uses different chemicals to color film. It 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 capture. It, I mean, I, I yeah, this is again going beyond my understanding, but like. It is just a different process. So if you take, because when you when you take color and turn it into black and white, you're basically just throwing everything away apart from luminance, which is not how black and white works, right? So it looks noticeably different. I'm sure you could apply some like clever filters to make it look, you know, virtually the same as what black and white used to look like. And you know, we've got nothing against that, but it does have a different quality and and a less nice quality. Yeah, that was a bit babbling. Um- but yeah, no, spot on. I yeah, like I and no one pointed it out. Like someone pointed it out about three years ago for me, and I can't unsee it. Before then, I just took it. I took oh, it was black and white, isn't it? <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And then someone pointed it out who was a photographer, and then I can't, I can't unsee it. I can't. Yeah. I can't. If you, I don't know what it is that t- ticks you off, but it's like it's you. You start asking yourself when you see any black and white thing, was this shot in color? Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's interesting actually because uh, um, do you ever watch Clerk? Clerk what, Clark's? Yeah, uh, yeah. But that was shot in um, black and white, and it was literally on, shot in black on, and white on film as well because that was um, that's all they can afford, right? Yeah. Or it's all they had, or something to that effect. Yeah, it's also also you know black and, with, with analog photography. This applies to color as well, but you know different different films had different characteristics. You know, if you use two different films, take the exact same photograph, it would look slightly different because of the way you know. And I'm not just talking about like the speed of the film, but like just the, you know the a film from Agfa would look different from a Fuji film or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Well, well we use uh, in the office. We use, used to use. Now we're using iPhone cameras because they're really fucking good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we used to use Panasonic, and everyone in the office long time ago, long before I worked there, everyone agreed we're going to use one micro one brand of camera because that way we all can help each other if there's a problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can share lenses. Uh, and we all are on on the same page with a lot of the technical bits and pieces, so we can share the knowledge. You know, it just it mm. makes like office life easier. And that's generally, in my experience, what happens in an office is everyone agrees. Yeah, these are the tools we're going to use. Not always. Some, you know, and you, there are a lot of kinds of options, but especially when it comes to brands. Um, yeah. yeah, like everyone in my office uses Apple uh, because uh, some day, some time ago, someone had to make the call, or some group of people had to make the call, and it's stuck ever since right yeah um so we use panasonic but th- even though there are some parts of it that of the panasonic camera like the cameras themselves they're quite robust they're quite hardy 
um you look at what your uh you look at what people are taking with canon cameras and they're actually i don't know the color <laughs> kind of like quite nice you can you can get there with uh with some time in in dark table but uh cam, cam, uh canon seem to be quite a lot better at doing the color there and then on the fly and if you take several photos a day or you're you're doing a lot then what the camera can do matters a lot more than if yeah. you're just taking like i assume that's just a default an issue of default settings then right because it's i mean they're, they're all just using ccds now that presumably mm. do virtually identical things so it must just be but you can you know you, you can obviously process that process that in various different ways mm. so yeah their, their, their default setup much just different i guess mm. But it's, it's remarkable now. Like I, I like showing up with a camera because people know you're there to take photographs. Like as a prop, <laughs> it's yeah. very, very yeah. useful. Yeah. Um, but iPhone cameras now are more than good enough to take photographs for almost any occasion that's that's yeah. not artistic. Yeah. And and there was one I saw on on my iPhone. They you can do I think it's one point five or something like zero point five lens where it it basically folds <laughs> yeah. back on itself. Yeah. And you've got this ultra wide lens which actually really kind of useful yeah yeah um i don't use it that often because when you when you're taking when, when i take photos for, for for press i you want accuracy like accuracy yeah. is important you're not trying to um present you're not trying to be too artistic you're yeah. trying to yeah. be document trying to be like this is documentative yeah so i don't use it that often but like if you've got to take a picture in a small room of like i don't know like a wi meeting or something like that and you've got a you, you're in a small room and you got to you know you can't you can't move you know then some sometimes things like that like the ultra wide is just it's just great yeah and um, they, uh, yeah. they do clever stuff as well the phone cameras now because you know because they're very tiny lenses and all that like they, they do i know they do i don't know it's the specifics but i know they do some very clever stuff to make images yeah. look better <laughs> They have basically. Oh yeah, there's a lot, and also the sound recorder does that as well. Um, mm. I I use uh, Handy H1 sound recorder. Used to use it for like uh, recording various meetings and interviews and stuff like that, uh, and that was very much like it recorded as it is. I did actually run it through a compressor in Audacity usually, yeah. just to make it sure I recorded it true, and then I <coughs> adjusted to yeah personal use. And um, but but now when it comes to noise cancelling and all that kind of stuff. The Apple tools are really good. Yeah, like yeah. just on the phone record on the on the sound recorder and stuff like that. Uh, it it picks it. You don't notice things like echo in the room, right? Because mm -hmm. like a lot of meetings I cover, they're in like echoey council rooms and mm -hmm. stuff like that. The actual reverb actually is kind of really difficult. You know, like it's really a problem. Yeah. when it comes to having to record council meetings and things like that. So, um, yeah, like the the Apple stuff is it's it's amazing. It's almost like it was made to do the job, <laughs> and and it's the noise cancelling and the of things like fans in the summer, you know, like because yeah, yeah. yeah, like you can't you can't really ask people to turn off fans in the middle of of a heat wave and stuff <laughs> like that just so you can get a clear recording of them, um, and and all that kind of stuff. It's 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 great, and I reckon a lot of that is is yeah, like it's software noise cancelling and stuff like that. Yeah, so. Yeah, I mean they're expensive, and actually one of the reasons why I tend to, at least in my my personal life, advocate away from Apple is because the reason I got into Linux in the first place, I couldn't even afford a Microsoft license. <laughs> like yeah, I got, no, I got sure. handed down an old laptop for university, and um, and I don't even think the version of Windows on it was supported or anything like that. So it was like, all right, this is my opportunity to learn Linux. I've, I've you know I wanted to do it for a while. And uh, and I had to, and I had to, because it was my only computer. Mm -hmm. It had uh, Fedora Core Six, maybe I think was the first one, <laughs> and uh, it was good, and I loved it, loved it a bit. It, it was a rough road to ride, and I think if I didn't, if I if it wasn't my only computer, I think there might have been times when I bailed. Yeah, you know, like yeah, um, yeah. But I had to see it through, and that included things like running old games on Wine back before Wine had hit 2.0. Like, I remember like, version <laughs> one point six of Wine, one point eight of Wine. They were rough times. Yeah, and... people, people coming to Linux now and like using Proton and stuff. Like it wasn't like that back in the day. The amount of effort you were put into like maybe getting one in fifteen games just about running. That's yeah, and and two of those games were Morrowind and Deus Ex. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I got the you know, like I got lucky. 
<laughs> and any and any change in hardware and any change like you know there were times I did not want to update my operating system because I'm like what if wine fucks me on this we should one? have a little we should have a little look kids today section kids today you don't kids understand because kids, kids, today, kids today they don't know back in the day well, the first time they installed Linux Debian whatever two or something like you had to manually put in all the like technical capabilities of your monitor like horizontal well, if you got it wrong it but blew up if you got it wrong you could destroy your monitor it was it was scary stuff i've i've had that i, I i've been on the receiving end of that kids today speech <laughs> like, but it, really, it was what, yeah. it's come on um, but the, the but the i suppose that but so, like, to me, Macs were always a little bit of a... Even if I could afford, like, a second-hand one or a refurbished one, I did kind of feel like that that's a world I'm not invited to. That's a party I'm not invited yeah. to, you know? No, for sure, yeah. Even if I've yeah. got a second-hand one, what happens if it goes wrong? The support might not be... The, you know, like, yeah. these, are, these are machines that are designed to be done the way that Mac they're, uses... They're you know. computers for the upper middle class. <laughs> kind of, yeah, like, that's the thing. And not, it, yeah. And I even felt a degree, like in general proprietary software world, I felt a little bit like that because okay, mm. license for Windows was a hundred pound, and at the time, like I, you know, like that was that was a lot of money for mm. me. But then also, what? How much is Photoshop costing these days? Oh god, yeah. How much? How much is? Um, See, I think the ro- the road uh, that most people went down, the road that I went down at that point, is just pi- pirated it, pirated Windows, pirated Photoshop. You know, I pirated that. And you know, then got jobs doing those things, and eventually ended up paying for them. Which you know, I wish companies would learn from. But um, mm. yeah, it's uh, the, the, the fact that you, you know, took a moral stance and didn't pirate and learn. Linux, oh, I don't so know. If kinda... I I often felt that they were just going to come one day. The perfect DRM was going to come along, and then <laughs> it, it was would precarious. all go away. Right? Yeah. 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 It was precarious and transient. Mm. So that. that out of it and again i felt like it was a world i just wasn't invited to do you know what, what? i think I, I think that transient that uh, that tran, tran, is that the right word yeah transients i think that was a big part of why i because because I've been, I've been running linux since like 1999 but it became my main my well it be, i switched to linux full time much later and i think that precarity was a was a big part of it they're having to i think it was windows xp would every now and then uncrack itself Mm. And, and it was a bit yeah. it was partly like oh this is becoming a chore and partly like at some point they're going to nail this <laughs> yeah exactly and i think they might have it's, might have they done now I or think so yeah because it's so online need- isn't it it's basically online drm at this point yeah pretty much wow when you're when your operating system is online drm mm. Uh, you I, know, and, and, and actually like i'm so glad that i moved to Linux. i don't i don't want to you don't want to evangelize really but I'm so so glad that I'm on Linux now. When I see Windows, you know, on my niece's laptop or whatever, and like again, try to say it, but adverts in the start menu, like seriously, people live with that. It's mad. Kids don't. Kids these days. Kids don't today. <laughs> no, that yeah, and and the idea of having an operating system that expects you to be online yeah. it regularly, if not all the time. I, I don't want that. No. Like just as a function, right? Like that's just a, I, I want my operating system to be like, and also I know people now who, who have asked me to install Linux on, onto their machines because of this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Not many. Like it's not, it's not a, it's not like a, a wave or anything like yeah, that. Like yeah. it's a few people here and there that see the problem. And I, I've put Linux mint on that tends to be my go-to for people like that. They want something that just they just no adverts in the start menu. That's why they're coming to Linux. They're I think one of the things that amazes it. people though, and it is kind of amazing, is what you know when you do an update on Linux that updates your operating system and all your software. As you, you know, at least what's, yeah. what's installed from the repos. That's kind of mad. Like we forget how mad that is compared to you know Windows and Mac. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, and it's it's nice and it runs. Yeah, you know, it runs well as well. Uh, there's a like I, I do feel like you you do get more bang out your buck. I've got ThinkPads that I'm running that are X two twenties. They're like what are they fifteen years old or something. Yeah, like that? yeah, yeah. And they start faster than a modern Mac yeah. that was twenty. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, twenty fourteen or something like that. Yeah. Um. It's yeah, and and a lot of it actually when I run personally is is uh, Debian stable. I do sometimes re- toy with the idea of a Debian testing or Debian unstable. <laughs> but to be honest. I mean, what's the I point? I can do every. Like, yeah, if you can what's do the point? I can point? do everything yeah. I need. There is not one single solitary thing 
that I cannot do on uh, on on Debian stable. Mm. Like it, a, anything I would want would probably be something online. Well, that would be. I, thing, I, I can't even if think. If you encounter it. a piece of software that you know the, the, the libraries are too old or something, you can, this other way you can flat pack it. You can, you know, there are ways around that now. That mm. yeah, it just it Debian plus flat pack is is everything I could ever possibly yeah. need. Uh, I've got itch.io for some games. I've got Steam for games. Uh, so so even like so so games is taken care of with Steam, and I, I think Steam have been great for Linux. To be honest, you know, like yeah. it, you always got to like, be wary, but yeah, for sure. Mm, yeah I, the fact you know, that they obviously I'm, I think the biggest thing is the fact that they worked on open source projects rather than you know doing their own thing I mean they benefit yeah. from that of course but you know they've done it unlike Google they've been a good open source citizen I think very good yeah I I, I literally like the, the, I could not expect better behavior from them in reality yeah. maybe some people might come back at me with some like DRM type stuff that that's kind of valid I guess but like for the most part, and similar with itch.io as well. Yeah. Um, you know, you cut actually with it, itch.io, I think are, are, are better in so far that you don't need the itch client. You can literally yeah. just download yeah. the binaries. Yeah. It's okay. It's a clunk, but that's, R- that's your choice, a small it? thing. That's a slight tangent. I, w- I wanted to mess around with some like visual programming the other day. And I remembered love 2d. I don't know if you know, love 2d is a thing, which is a very, yeah. it's, a, it's a very 2d game engine, but it's very, it's very cody. There's no idea or anything. It's basically, it's lure with like a graphics library basically okay. any good yeah so it's really cool but been messing with it for years i've really done much in it but um mm. in in like searching for it and googling for it and that i found uh, a game on it do you remember the game stronghold no it's a it's kind of rts where you run a castle it's castle management slash rts as i was more was more interested in building a cool castle than the rts side of it uh, but you build a cool castle it's a game from way back uh, and somebody has made in in Love Two D. They've made uh, a, an engine reimplementation of Stronghold uh, with mm. the blessing of the people who made Stronghold. <laughs> and it's just uh, it's just it's just up on itch.io for free. You can download the entirety of the Stronghold game re- remade in in Love Two D. And it's it's kind of great. And and when oh, I say well. when I say it was with the blessing of the people who made Stronghold, they still sell Stronghold on Steam. They did like a remaster kind of thing, and they still sell it on Steam. So it wasn't like oh, it's been out of print for ages. Yeah, so they just gave them the blessing, which I think is actually quite that's pretty cool. <laughs> that's kind of nice. Yeah, I think I think the Deus Ex revision also got the the blessing of the pe- people that made it. That's cool. It is cool when they do that. Uh, yeah, I hope I, I hope I'm right on that one. And that's how the revision mod got. Uh, allowed on steam yeah, i think it right. did need I think someone someone like from because um, valve, valve always do that with their own things don't they like you know if somebody makes yeah. a half-life or portal thing they're like yeah go for it which is yeah that's pretty cool mm. there was good. there was um i think it's the mel stories or something like that there's like a, yeah. a portal spin-off yeah 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 i really enjoyed it. i got stuck at a point and then i kind of went away and never came back there's even that um there's like a portal but more hardcore game and I think it's literally called Portal something like they've even used the name and I think some of the branding stuff and and but, but yeah I mean Valve have that history of you know when you know Half Life came out somebody made CS as a mod for Half Life and they rather than you know trying to shut them down they hired them <laughs> which is you know amazing yeah and I think that that's the, the that's the thing with um they like the, well. They can be like they. It's a bit of confidence, I guess, in that they know their power, so they can be graceful. Yeah. It's like if okay, so someone makes a um a a, a portal to spin off that is good, right? Yeah. Like it's 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 a solid thing. Um, where else are they going to sell it if not Steam? Like yeah. Valve are holding all the cards, uh, but I but they do make the, so so it's like it's so easily their call to make. They so easily could shut it down. They yeah. are like they're not doing. They could like. I, I suppose you know credit to them for actually making the smart decision here. Yeah, it's obviously not going to hurt. I, I don't. I don't get why other companies. You know, when somebody makes a thing and it gets. I mean, Bethesda are bad for this. Nintendo are bad for this. Like somebody makes a you know a fan thing and they shut it down. Like all that is doing is generating more interest in your thing. Really, mm. like no harm is being done to you. And Valve do seem to get that. And also, of course, if they're selling it on Steam, they're also taking thirty percent of all the sales. Which you know, yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, that's it, isn't it? Yeah, it's 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 not so much. I mean, it's it's 
it's it's a smart move more than it's a generous move. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Suppose, really, but it's it's a good. It's, it's a, yeah, kind of like some of the other things we've mm. talked about. It's, it, it's the right decision for maybe the wrong reasons, but it's still the right decision. Yeah, I, I mean, I think when these things are done, these, these decisions are made ideally. They're made as a as a, a um, amongst several people mm. from maybe different departments, mm. and some people are going to be pushing this for different reasons anyway, right? So. You know the 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 truth is always you know a few layers down. Yeah. Anyway, so it's um, but fair play to them. Fair yeah. play to them. You know they could have. Uh, I I suppose I think with the Bethesda stuff, I I think it was just money. I think it was like, oh, you're making mods. Well, we want to make mods, and we can kick you out of the marketplace. So yeah, we yeah, can, yeah. so only our mods are for sale. Yeah. I I think and, Bethesda are just a dumb company. I think. The, well, they make yeah dumb decisions, so which is a shame because they of course made one of the greatest games of all time. But yep, almost I kind of feel at this point almost by accident. Hmm. I think that's they, just, a, that's... they just happened to have some very talented people there at the time. Well, that's companies, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like you know. Is is Elon Musk's true talent being able to hire smart people, knowing a smart person when he sees them? <laughs> maybe being good, being good at HR. You know? I, I don't know. Well, I think his talent was being born into wealth, really. Yeah, we, yeah, but like there are more, more than you know. We are, we are, we are, we are over three hours. Should we? Yeah, yeah. Wind yeah, it. Yeah. We should wind it. Save all our stuff. I, I mean, we're just yammering at this point. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it was, but um. Okay, we're not selling any merch. We're not doing a Patreon, so I don't know. Goodbye. You can uh, you can reach me on Gopher at Drew.Monster. Mm-hmm. My website, chrisware.wales, has all my bits and pieces on. Um, <laughs> this will be on PeerTube. Hello, people on PeerTube. If you're watching this on PeerTube, congratulations, you're our favorite. Yeah, absolutely our favorite. If you're watching this on YouTube, go fuck off to <laughs> PeerTube and watch this on well, not, not not like the whole thing again. That would be silly, right? <laughs> look at because it's not going to carry over. Just look at where you are and the little timey thing, and then kids today probably don't know how to do that because everything just like automatically picks up where they left off, right? So there is a little yeah. thing in the bottom left that tells you where you're up to in minutes and seconds on the video and hours in this case. So just remember that and then go to that point on the other one. You might need a pen and paper. Yeah, yeah. I've got my pen and paper. I'll actually try and write some notes as I go for the show on. Do you remember send it in oh. a, send it in a, on a self addressed postcard? Do you remember that from oh, TV? Yeah, like, self addressed. I've actually I got never, a never knew what that meant. Save that for next week. What, what is a self addressed postcard? Wouldn't, uh, wouldn't that just go to you? A self-addressed envelope. Self-addressed envelope, yeah. So if they were going to send something back to you, you'd put a stamp. Self-addressed stamped, envelope. No, not self-addressed envelope. It's a stamp-addressed envelope um, addressed to yourself. Got it. Right, yeah, that makes sense. A stamped self-addressed envelope. Kids so, say. like, basically, if if you're going to win a... Uh, Blue Peter Brad. Know, Blue Peter Brad, yeah. Um, they, no, just... uh, yeah. All right, well done. Good work, team. <laughs> Congratulations for making it through the podcast. If you made it uh, this far, let us oh, know. Oh, I'll tell you what. No, I've got a great if you made Go it, on. right? Does anyone remember Granny's Garden? I played that on the school <laughs> BBC computer. I, some friends and I played through that fairly recently, a couple, like a year or two ago. We played through that, and it is a disturbing experience. It is. It's 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 a trip. <laughs> that was the, uh, they, I think they made school kids play that. It's that's that is like the UK's version of the Oregon Trail. So yeah. if you're an American, yeah. talk about the Oregon Trail because and that's to, a be good fair, game. to be fair, the Oregon Trail is a much better game. The Oregon Trail is actually a game, whereas Granny's Garden is kind of ahead of its time in just being a collection of mini games, really. Okay. Your webcam's frozen. Are you still there, Chris? We've lost. <laughs> still, I'm frightened now. What do I do? I'm on my own. I'm not used to this. Chris is a big famous YouTuber. I don't know how to talk to people. I'll, uh, 
Might stop the recording. We just have a very unusual ending. We've lost Chris. He may have died. Wales may have been taken out in a nuclear incident. Unclear at this point. Check the news, I guess. Is this, is this him or is it me? Okay, my internet seems to still be working, so this is Chris. So we'll give him a moment to come back. Or maybe it is my internet. It's my internet. Well, my internet's died for some reason, so goodbye, everybody. If you made it to the end, do whatever Chris said. Have a lovely time.